Hey, Peace Family, during this time of uncertainty and crisis, let me give you some free game. Tap in to all the lessons from our Corner Class Tour for you and your family right now. RBCs is things we did not learn in school. Let me tell you guys a little bit about that. You guys locked in today? I see y'all got your pens, pads, all that good stuff. Can somebody help me open this? My hand's got lotion on it. <laughs> I can't open the marker cap. All right. All right. Thank you. King Isaac, thank you. All right, so our RBCs stands for real estate, business, and credit. Three fundamental pillars that we all need to know within our communities, within our families. First of all, the quickest path to creating wealth. How many people know it's real estate? The quickest path to creating wealth is real estate. The reason that's the case, did you know you can buy real estate with no money out of your pocket? How many people knew that? That's what we teach here at the Jay Morrison Academy, and that's what you're going to learn in the RBCs. Business. Where my entrepreneurs at? Business owners. See, one of the things that I've learned on my journey in being an entrepreneur for 15 years, a lot of people don't make it in business because they don't have the proper strategies. See, I know a lot of people that can bake a, 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 a nice cake, but that doesn't mean they can run a business. You, you guys catch me on that? I know a lot of dope barbers, but that doesn't mean they can run a barber shop. Same thing with a real estate investor. Anybody can buy a house, but doesn't mean they have the proper strategies to be an actual real estate developer. That's what we're going to teach you on the business component of, of our RBCs. And then, of course, the C stands for credit. How many people in here know that credit equals wealth? Y'all really believe that, right? And that's because as long as you have great credit, you'll always be able to get money from the banks. And this is why I tell people that the money is the easiest part. Right now, the banks are giving the money away as long as you have great credit. And we're going to show you some of those strategies right here on the corner. And, and, and the other beautiful thing about the corner class, y'all know we do this for free, right? And nobody got excited about that. Now, I'm going to pass the collection plate in a minute. <laughs> we got to get back home. So, so it, it's not many people that I can say that's out here teaching about financial literacy for free. For free. Go to one of these other big time mogul real estate and credit courses. You paying how much? Three, four, five thousand dollars to get in the door. And then you're gonna, they're gonna upcharge you to twenty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars for their package. And guess what? You will never get to talk to the person who actually owns the company. And then they don't give you anything practical. Everything they teach you is theory. And then guess what? You still got to go out and find the money. They're not teaching you about credit. They're not teaching you about business. They're saying, hey, let me show you how to flip this house. But then we're going to be on a deal with you and take 50% of your profits. Anybody familiar with those programs? Trust me, I've been to most of them. And so this is why our RBC curriculum is so powerful. Now, another thing in relation to credit, I want to put you guys up on something. Did you guys know we're one of the last ones to the table to learn this information? Because they said what you don't know can what? What you don't know can what? Can hurt you, and it will. See, yesterday when I was going to the corner class, I was in an Uber with my driver who's from uh, Morocco. And when he pulled up, he was asking me, he was like, what, what are you guys out here for? This is beautiful. I was like, oh, we're teaching a financial literacy class on real estate, credit, this, that, and the third. And he was like, wow, that's beautiful. Did you know that? We learn about credit before we even come to the country. Y'all heard that? He said we learned about credit before we even came to the country. See, how many people thought that a lot of times when the foreigners come over here and get to start and open businesses that they get a special grant or special tax privileges? And be honest, raise your hand. Did you guys know that's not the case? They learned about credit. This is what they do. So they understand that. There's power in leveraging your credit. I want everybody to write the word leverage down. There's power in leveraging your credit. See, what they've failed to not teach us, which was on purpose, because imagine if we learned this stuff in high school. Where would we be right now? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I've yet to learn, I've yet to have to dissect a frog in my adult life. That's what they're teaching us in school. They're not teaching us about credit. And so he said what they're doing is that they're understanding the power of leveraging their credit, starting an LLC, and then going to the bank and getting what we call TBM, which is the bank's money. 
I'm gonna show y'all that strategy. Y'all still with me? Yeah. All right. So as long as you have great credit, so say you have a 700 plus credit score. Well, first of all, I want everybody to write this down. It's not about the credit score, it's about your credit profile. Somebody been paying attention, I like that. It's about your credit profile. The reason that's important to know is because you can have a 700 credit score with just having a $300 credit card reporting. That's it. Now, also on the flip side of that, the reason it's, under, it's important to understand why it's the profile is important, let's say all you had is a $300 credit card and you max out that card and it goes to collections. Did you know you have a 400 credit score? But does that mean that your credit is horrible? Y'all know this interactive, right? Not just one person. That doesn't mean your credit is horrible. It just means based off of the information that's reporting for that one credit card, it's impacting your credit score. But as long as you keep this account in good standings, you'll have great credit or at least a great credit score. So what the banks are looking for is a credit profile, meaning not only that you have multiple revolving credit lines, that you also have a good mixture of credit and that you have great payment history. The reason it's important to make all your payments on time, because first of all, credit is really just the ability to make payments over time. If you get one late payment, who can tell me what's the average amount of points your score will drop? 50 to 150 points for one late payment. See, this is why we got to make our payments on time. So if anything, I tell all my clients, put your, put your bills on auto pay. Because understand, life will happen. How many people know that? Life will happen. Fast. You know, you're on vacation. You, whatever, you're, whatever we have going on, last thing we want to do is come home and get, a, 50, get a, a late payment on a $15 credit card bill. I've seen it happen all the time. And so, understanding, another component of why we need to understand what makes up a credit score, and then I'll go into how to get the bank's money, is your credit usage. Who knows what credit usage is? Your credit utilization based off of revolving credit. 30%, right. So there's two different types of credit. I want everybody to write this down for those who may not know. We have what's called installment credit and we have revolving. Your installment credit will be anything with a fixed payment, like an auto loan, your mortgage, student loan debt. Now, how many people have heard this? Come buy a car and fix your credit or repair your credit. I want you guys to know that that's false. Buying a vehicle does not help you fix your credit. Now, if you get a late payment, will it happen to your credit? It'll hurt it. See, it's really just one big game. That's why I call it the credit game. But that's why we have to learn the rules because when you learn the rules, you can play differently. Would you guys agree with me? So now, that's installment credit. Then you have what's called revolving credit. Who can tell me what revolving credit is? Credit cards, department store cards, anything like that. Anything with the revolving balance. And so, with having revolving credit, this has the highest impact to what makes up your credit score, which is 30% of your score is tied to credit utilization with revolving credit. So I always tell people, write this down, credit is really just a tool. Credit is a tool. And when you learn how to master the tools, what kind of things can you create? Definitely leverage. Beautiful things. Any carpenters or general contractors in the house? What do you got to do? What, what do you have to have to be a great contractor? Got to have tools. So if we want to master this thing called life, we need a lot of what? Check this out. Did you know credit, your credit score can dictate the school zone your kids go to school in? Did you know that? Did you know renting a lot of times is more expensive than a, a, a mortgage? Did you know your insurance rates is dictated by your credit score? And I'm sure in New York the insurance rates is high. I, I, I increased my insurance policy when I got in the Uber a couple days ago. I'm like, man, they, they drive a little different different out here. And so understanding that credit is really just a tool because when you learn how to master it, then you play the game of understanding how revolving credit works. So check this out. Going back to the scenario, let's say all you had was a $1,000 credit card. Because who in here were told that credit cards are bad? But I want to tell y'all something. It's not that credit cards are bad. It's people who are irresponsible with money that's bad. I know people that's burnt every single bank. Does that have anything to do with credit? Does it have anything to do with credit? 
they're just financially irresponsible. But a lot of times that's because we haven't been taught anything about money. You know, a lot of times in our household, we talk about money, it's like you gotta whisper it. No, we need to start teaching this to our kids. We need to start teaching this to our youth. So, because first of all, how many people know you're not here just for yourself right now? We're here for our loved ones, the people who can't make it. I mean, this information is, 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 is life changing. This information changed my life. And this is why I'm so passionate. This is why we're passionate here at the Jay Morrison Academy. So going back to the $1,000 credit line, we all said that life can happen, right? So you got a $1,000 credit limit, that's it. Brakes go out, you gotta get your brakes fixed, $750. Now if you don't have the cash, where are you gonna pull the money to fix your brakes? So what just happened to your credit utilization? What's that percentage? 75%, what just happened to your score? Overnight, had nothing to do with getting a late payment, had nothing to do with getting a collection account. Just for living, your credit score can change. So at minimum, I always tell people you want to have access to five to ten thousand dollars of available credit. Five to ten thousand, just for a case of emergency. Where my homeowners at? How much is a water heater wants to replace it with labor? A lot. About thirty-five hundred bucks I had to spend last uh, winter to fix my water heater. And if you don't have thirty-five hundred in the bank, where are you going to use the money? From where? But if you only have a thousand dollar limit, you don't have. Uh, any money in the bank, where are you going to pull the money from? What's that? What if your credit bad? What's that? No, payday loan. Y'all see that hustle? Y'all see that hustle they got on us, right? They sent us to the payday loan place. What's the average interest rate on the payday loan? About 300%. They robbing us, family, they robbing us. See, we think we don't have any other options. We have the options, we just don't know that they exist. Or in our eyes, they take too long. I want everybody to write the word patience down. Write the word patience. See, a lot of times we don't have patience to go and, 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 and position ourselves because everything in life is really about positioning. See, where you are today is a direct reflection of the decisions you made three to five years ago. So if you don't like where you are today, guess what? You probably didn't make the best decisions. So if you want to change the next three to five years from now, what do we got to do today? We have to make better decisions. And with that comes patience. It comes discipline. We have to. It comes also accountability. See, a lot of us don't want to be accountable for anything. You know, it's like we want to go to the gym and, and, and get abs in two weeks, but we've been eating, you know, we've been eating trash for the past 30 years. Creating wealth doesn't work like that. Everybody write this down. True wealth is created slowly. And see, once we really understand that, then we'll know this is not an overnight process. You know, we talk to some people and they're like, you know, I want to build a, a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio. I'm trying to have, you know, all this money, this, that, and the third, and I want to do it in the next 45 days. I'm like, okay. But then we'll go work a job for 40 years and don't ask them how do we become wealthy on that job. But then we come to the Jay Morrison Academy and we want a miracle. Now, we do perform miracles because we've transformed lives. But guess what? To create wealth, guess who has to actually do the work? Who? We do. You, me, we have to do the work. See, my grandfather used to always say, if it's dressed in overalls and look like work, we don't want to do it. Some of y'all will catch that on the way home. We don't want to do it. We have to put in the work, family. We have to. So, I'm going to show y'all this. Check this out. So, from here on out, we're not doing payday loans no more, right? 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 All right. We're going to fix our credit. Because how many people know you can always restore your credit? Always. I don't care how bad it gets. Always repair your credit. So, this is, this is the strategy that the wealthy have not, that has not taught us. I'm about to give y'all some million dollar game. Y'all ready? Three people. Okay, I'm going to talk to this side. I'm about to give y'all some million dollar game. So, when you have great credit, let's say you have a 750 credit score. Alright? Then you go and set up a business. 
Now, I want people to understand, just getting an EIN does not mean you're a business. I want people to know that. That, that just means you're a sole proprietor. It's a big difference. You have to actually have a business entity, a formation of an LLC, an incorporation, or an S-corp. The type of business structure you set up is really based upon your tax liability. So you want to find an expert that's going to help you to structure that properly. I primarily like for uh, someone who's just newly starting a business, LLC is going to be the most attractive and the most simple to set up. Okay? So you set up your LLC. You have your great credit score. As long as you have great credit in the LLC, you can walk into any bank and get access to either credit cards or a business line of credit. Who knows the difference between a business, a business credit card and a business line of credit? So a credit card is something that you just swipe. Okay, you guys with me? You guys with me? Yeah. All right, y'all know this interactive, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. A business line of credit is where you get a line of credit, let's say $50,000. You can walk into the bank and pull cash off that line of credit. So if you need to show 10,000, if you need $10,000 to show proof of funds for this real estate development, you can walk into the bank and they can give you $10,000 cash or you can write a check against that business line of credit. Now with that being said, when you go and go after, there's two different types of lending for your business. You can have revolving credit lines or you can go after what's called uh, business loans. Who in here has tried to get a small business loan before? How difficult was it? Very difficult. And that's because who can tell me the percentage of approvals for a small business to get a loan? 2%. And they don't lend you that much. And if your company made zero dollars, they're not going to lend to you anyway because they're going to go based upon your business income. But did you guys know there's a loophole in the banking system? Going after, what's that? Okay. So when, you go, when you're going after revolving credit, did you guys know there's the loophole in the banking system is like when you have your great credit, you have your LLC, you can go to any bank with your company and get, and get unsecured revolving credit lines. Who knows what unsecured means? What does it mean? No collateral. No collateral. That's powerful. Secondly, it's non-discretionary. Who knows what that means? You can use it for any purpose. That is very powerful because if, let's say you're one of the two percent that does get a business loan and you're saying it's for a building you're trying to acquire for a lease, guess what you have to use it for? Guess what you have to use it for? But you still need inventory. You're out of money. So what you don't know can what? Can hurt you, but I'm about to change that for you guys. Okay, so you have your, business, you have your credit, good credit. You have your LLC. We're not going after a loan. We're going after revolving credit in the form of credit cards and the business line of credit. Did you know when you go after revolving credit, you don't have to show proof of income? And nobody got excited. I still got excited when I heard that, though. One person, okay. Check this out. For anybody who is trying to change their life, and you're trying to get into real estate, you're trying to start a business, but you don't have a job, did you know as long as you have great credit, an LLC, you don't have to show the bank proof of income? That is, that's huge. I'm telling you, this is information that nobody has been teaching us. So, all right, Eugene, my mic, is the mic going out? Can you guys hear me in the back? Y'all can hear me? Okay, so no proof of income. Next, you can do what's called stated income. Who knows what that means? You can put down whatever you want for the income. So even if you don't have a job, you can put down you made 150000 for the year. That is not true. No. Oh, no, my bad, King. Nope, you don't pay taxes on that because the banks don't talk to the IRS. Two separate entities. Because remember, you're not filing a tax return with the bank. You're just telling them this is what your income is. Secondly, no tax returns. Because when you're a brand new business, have you even filed taxes yet? See, y'all see the hustle? You have to have tax returns to get a business loan. Check this out. So I was up the other night, and I thought about the craziest, most bizarre thing in the world. 
Did you know you can have no credit or bad credit, 18 years old, and get $100,000 in student loan debt, but you can't get a $5,000 small business loan with great credit? Y'all see the hustle in that? Now, no disrespect to college, but they robbing us, family. They're robbing us. Check this out. Did y'all know information changes every 18 months? How long does it take to get an average college degree? But we just said information changes how often? So by the time you get out of school in four years, what do you got to do? Got to go right back. And then you come out entry level, how much is the average salary? About 30000 But you have 200000 in student loan debt. Y'all see that? It doesn't add up. Exactly, because Uncle Sam getting 30% of that, unless you own a business. We'll teach you all that on another class. So, going back to what we talked about, revolving credit, no proof of income, stated income, and no tax returns. Now, if you had three companies, let's say you had three LLCs, and you had great credit, 750 plus, how many of those companies can you go and get credit for? All of them. Now, let's say there were 25 banks in a five mile radius of here. How many of those banks can you take those three LLCs to and get money? No proof of income, no tax returns, and no tax and uh, stated income. Hold on one second, Queen. Now, let's say your credit gets messed up because how many people understand in business you may take an L? It's possible. 80% of businesses fail within two years, and that's okay. That's okay, because those are teachable moments, or as I call it, paid tuition, because we, we spend money all the time and, and take L's. We have to understand, in business, you just, may you just may take an L. But So let's just say something happens, your business takes a fall. This is why it's important we have to understand about what's called family credit, or our credit partners, as we call them. Meaning, you start helping the people around you improve and, and repair their credit. Because then, if your credit takes a bump or a bruise, guess what? You have a partner whose credit is in position, and you can add them to the LLC. Y'all catching that? So, write the word strategy down. Strategy. See, we don't have a money problem. We don't have a credit problem. We have a strategy problem. We don't have the right strategies. At least after today, that, that can no longer be an excuse. All right, you guys with me? Y'all still with me? Y'all awake? Okay, so you have your partner's credit, your credit partner. Your credit took a bump or a bruise. You have a 500, so now you're going through credit repair. Okay? So you got your partner. You still own the company. You own the LLC. What you're going to do is you're going to take your partner's credit, add them on as a managing member to the LLC. Now, how many people know just because you add somebody on a partnership on your LLC doesn't mean they get 50% of the profits? Who dictates what percentage they get? You do. You're the owner of the company. All you're doing is structuring this as a strategy component to go and get the bank's money. So now, you add your credit partner onto the LLC. You're going to then create what's called an operating agreement. An operating agreement is something that isn't filed with anybody. That's just something that you hold, and then you submit that to the bank. On the operating agreement, you're going to make the person with great credit a 90% primary owner of the company. Does that mean they get 90% of the profits? No. You can own 0% of the company and get 100% of the profits. It's all about how you structure it. But the reason you add them on as 90% owner of the LLC for the operating agreement is because the banks cannot request a tax, excuse me, the banks cannot request a credit re report for anybody that has 15% or less. Y'all caught that strategy piece? So you can find a credit partner, add them onto your LLC, create an operating agreement, make them 90% primary owner just on paper, walk into the 25 banks, and how many of those banks can you use your credit partner to go and get some capital? Y'all caught that? So is money the issue? Is money the issue? It shouldn't be. It's all about strategy. And then the last component before I bring up uh, the next speaker is, I want everybody to write this down. 80% of the success is based off of our mindset. 80% of the success is based off of our mindset. See, a lot of the times we haven't made it in anything because our thinking stinks. We have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. The how-tos, it's irrelevant. 
See, a lot of times we want to know every little detail on how to do something. We, we just got to go out there and get busy. See, how many people, who, who in here is familiar with Henry Ford? Who is he? Anybody, shout him out. Who is Henry Ford? Did you guys know he never created an automobile personally himself? He hired people who knew how to. See, Henry Ford had a why. He was a visionary. He was the CEO, which my brother King Jay is going to talk about. Write, to, write this down. I want everybody to go home and do this. I want you to work on your why. Work on why do you want to become wealthy. It can't just be about the money, because I'm telling you, money doesn't make you happy. It does not. Now, it will lubricate life. I will say that. But it doesn't make you happy. Your why has to also be the reason why you're going to get up when things are difficult and still go out there and make it happen. When you don't feel like getting up, that's when you need to get up. When you've been rejected 10 times, that's when you need to go out there and get rejected another 10. Because all it takes is one yes to turn your entire life and, and change your entire financial situation. How many people would agree with me on that? Now, how many people are going to hold themselves accountable? How many people are going to go out and be intentional? And how many people are ready, are ready to change their entire family trajectory with this information and game that they're about to get today? All right, give yourself a round of applause. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need a lot of word than that. Come on, y'all got to get excited for yourselves. Definitely, there we go. Because guess what? If we don't get excited for ourselves, nobody else will. Would you guys agree with me? Absolutely. So, what I'm about to do is bring up my sis. She ready? King Isaac, you ready? Oh, okay. So I'm actually gonna bring up my brother, King Isaac, who I'm telling you, this king is 26 years old. Not everybody, never assume everybody know who you are. That's why Hove always tell his story. You never know who is listening, new ears, all right? So this king, 26 years old, high school dropout, built a $900,000 business and grossed over $300,000 in revenue last year in his real life. So, again, we always say, you can make excuses or make money, but you can't do both. This king went out and made some money. Y'all want to hear from him? So I want to give it up for my brother, King Isaac. Yes, sir. Brooklyn, what up? How y'all doing? We got a lot of people in here, man. Y'all looking good, all the beautiful kings and queens. I want to thank you guys for coming out. Real quick, I want you got out. You can hear me? Everybody can hear me? All right, so I want you guys to repeat after me. Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. So, so this is a, a term that's used in real estate that ultimately says that we need to, we need to have, a, have a time limit on a contract or, you know, it, it needs to be stated in, in, in paperwork. So I want you guys to pull out a piece of paper real quick and... The average, the average man lives to 78 years old. The average woman lives to 82. So man, write down 78. Woman, write down 82. So what I want you guys to do is multiply that number by 365. You guys are going to get a number. You want to calculate it right here, King? All right. Now what I want you guys to do is multiply that number by 0.66 for the time that we eat and sleep. What's that number? 18,790. That represents, on average, how many days you have left on this earth. So ask yourself this question. If you, if you went to the doctor today and you found out that you was diagnosed with cancer and they say you was gonna die in seven days. Think about that for a moment. Walking out of there, what are you gonna do with your next seven days? Right here, what are you gonna do with your next seven days? See family, what about you, queen? Right, right her wrongs, king right here? Family and get the spirit right. Enjoy life, travel, do the things that we always had on our bucket list, right? So the whole key to real estate, understanding real estate business and credit is to understand that we got to master businesses, create businesses, work in our businesses so we can work out of them to work on them so that we can ultimately 
get to our perfect day as if we was in our last seven days. That's to travel, that's to spend time with family, that's to do all of them great things there. So, how many people may want to know a little bit about me? By show of hands. All right, perfect. So, my name is Isaac Grace, I'm 26 years old. I'm from a small town in New Jersey called Lakewood, New Jersey, which is Ocean County, New Jersey. And um, I ran into the Jay Morrison Academy in 2014. Prior to running to there, I was caught up in the corp I mean, in the culture trap as well as the corner trap. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to them too there. I was out here, I was running the streets, I was hustling, I was trying to party. I was just trying to impress the people that were in front of me every single day. And the more money that I made, you know, the more, the more money that I spent. And I found myself running in circles. I got into the Jay Morrison Academy 2014. I seen a wake up video. How many people seen that wake up video? King Jay, you know, in, in the back of the Rolls Royce in a nice suit, three time felon telling us to wake up. You know, we think that rocking, you know, rocking out, sagging our pants, you know, thinking that that's cool, blowing money fast. We losing, we fucking up. Excuse my language, Queen, but we, we messing up. And after I heard that message that same day, it instantly grabbed me, it pulled me. I was an opportunist looking for an opportunity. Football didn't work out, sports didn't work out, I never was a rapper. Boxing didn't work out for me. And that was an opportunity to, 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 to take this guy on and see more about him. I joined the Jay Morrison Academy that same night. Six months later, I got my first real estate wholesale deal done, made $12,500. And that really, thank you, thank you. So to see myself running the streets from the age of 16, from the age of 16 to, to 22 years old, so in, in six months, have a check with my business name, Isaac Grace Investments LLC, paid to the order of Isaac Grace Investments LLC. As a 20 year old, it really opened my eyes. And at that point there, I really woke up. I had to understand that it was gonna take a lot more than just understanding the real estate. You know, King Will said this um, in Newark, that 20% of this is the mechanics, the strategy, that's the real estate, that's learning the business about real estate business and credit. 80% of this is the mindset. And that's what I didn't have at the time. You know, I made the money, but I didn't have the mindset as an entrepreneur. So what I did was, I worked backwards. I, I figured out what my perfect day looked like, what would I look like as a, as a, as a, a professional entrepreneur, and I worked backwards from that. I self-developed myself. I invested in more mentorship, education. I networked. I got around the people that I wanted to be like. And in 2015, I went to an event out in Philly with um, one of Jay's events. And we ended up, after the event, sitting in my car and we were talking. And his vision on this entire corner class before it ever happened, I, heard, I, 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 vis I seen him speak about this well before this ever happened. And to be here, a part of the three-day finale, is a blessing to see back in 2015 when this was just a vision to really help our inner city communities and bridge this wealth gap. So I want you guys to give it up for yourselves for being here today. This is big, this is big right here. This is the first step. There's a lot of people that, that, that's home, that could have came, didn't come. Maybe they went out last night and too tired to get up, but you guys are here. You guys gotta be intentional. You gotta open up your spirit. You gotta catch the message and get aligned. And if there's an opportunity there, you gotta go take it. So after I, 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 I had this talk with Jay, I ended up again, fine tuning myself, investing in um, a lot of mentorship, paid over five figures multiple times, you know, master wholesaling, put a team around me, got an office, got serious, put systems, processes, protocols, and automations in place to really run a business and not just run around here and pick up a check every six months or every three months and post it up on Instagram for some likes. I really wanted to create a business because how many days we got left on this earth is very important to me. So 2000 and 2018, um, I reunited with Jay. I told myself, you know what? I'm gonna invest. I've been investing in you know, a lot of different people. I wanna bring it back home to where it all started. I invested in one-on-one -on -one mentorship with Jay and you know, he really helped me elevate my game from a brand, from a brand presence, from a public speaking presence, you know, from an influence. I call myself the millennial hope dealer now. So for me, I'm all about the millennials. You know, I'm young, I'm 26. I want to see all of our young people win. 
I want to be that testimonial to show you guys that you can be young black in America. If you get your stuff together, you really can make it happen for yourself. So I, I invested, I invested and I locked in. I followed the rule, I followed my mentor. I didn't reinvent the wheel. Even if I was confused about what I was told to do, I followed it and I trusted in the person that I, I paid my mentorship with. A lot of people get mentorship and you don't even want to listen to your mentors. You want to listen to your cousin or your uncle that told you something, but you paid a, 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 your mentor and you want to go against it. So I listened to everything, became a wholesale master coach because of my success in the real estate business. Under the Jay Morrison brand, I started as a student. I started where you guys was, from a wake up video to a, to a, um, to a weekend event, to investing, to, to, to having success and always showing love to where, where, it was, where it was showing love to me. 2018, I was able to do over 30 real estate wholesale transactions, netting me over $300,000 in business profit and $300,000 in business revenue, excuse me. And you know, that was really my takeoff. Had a great year, you know, experienced a lot, and you know, I'm on my way. 2019, you know, has been another successful year. You know, I'm so excited to, you know, speak about this, but at the end, of, at the beginning of this year, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is cancer for you guys who don't know. And at the time when I found out about this, I automatically knew that it was just a message from God helping me become a stronger person, have a stronger will, and step into a new level of life. I beat cancer about a month ago. Thank you. And at this point here, guys, I, I, I'm here, I'm passionate. I'm here to tell you guys that the Jay Morrison Academy, coming from a student to a protege to a business partner, young black 26-year-old high school dropout, if I could do it, any of you guys could do it. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the rock stars, the people that's serious, that's looking for them opportunities to come on to the family and, and be a value add. That's exactly what I was. Always focus on, write this down, when you want a business relationship, always focus on what's in it for them. Answer that question for anybody that you want to do business with, because you know what you want out of it, but you got to sell them on what's in it for them to work with you. So guys, 2019, we got about half the year left. For all of us, we all got the same 24 hours. I want you guys to really understand that the time is now. Time is of the essence. You ain't getting younger. Who, who ain't here getting younger? Is anybody? Do I not know something? Hey, teach me. Show me. 61 years young. <laughs> so, guys, we got to understand that we got to master stuff, real estate, business, and credit. We got to create businesses. We got to leverage credit. We got to put our families on. We got to be the CEO of our last names and create businesses so we can get our time back and live like we in the last seven years of our life. I want to thank you guys for your time and see you soon. King Isaac, I'm telling you, if anybody can do it, if he can do it, anybody can. Would you guys agree with me? Absolutely. So I'm going to bring up our next speaker, our very special guest speaker. We got a lot of, all of us are special guests, along with you guys, our special host for hosting us here in Brooklyn. And so this, this person is very near and dear to, to my heart, to the Academy's heart. And they always say behind every powerful king is a powerful what? Queen. And this queen is powerful, y'all. I'm telling you. So not only is she an actress, but she is the most viral poet in our generation. Did y'all catch that? The most viral poet in our generation. So I want everybody to give a round of applause that's so loud that they may just come over here and shut this shit down, all right? So I want y'all to give it up for my big sis, Queen Ernestine Morrison. Spin that shit, spin that shit, spin that shit and get it right back. No, how about buy some land, build that shit, build that shit and leave the pack. Or invest that shit, invest that shit and watch it stack. Watch it rack, watch it make your money back. Like double that, triple that. I'm trying to show you the format of how the rich get wealthy and stay wealthy. How they keep their pockets healthy and stay healthy. I'm trying to give you the cheat sheet of how a group of like-minded individuals came together to build a whole black Wall Street. Like, here's the formula. That same bag of weed you buy every day is $20 a day times seven days a week, times four weeks a month, times 12 months a year, that's $6,720.
That's 3% down on a $200,000 house. And in case you were unaware, it only takes 3% down to purchase a whole home. That's something you own. That seeds you've watered, planted, grown, and sown. See, when you have a strategic plan, you won't ever have to call anybody landlord because you'll be the lord of your land. See, we need to stop this generational curse and build generational wealth. We need to stop strictly being consumers while digging a ditch and making everybody else's family rich. Like, pop quiz, how do you know what a WCW means and you don't know what an ROI is? Or your FICO score is? See, our relationship with finances need to get way stronger. Like, we need to build a way better rapport. Like, you cute and all, but I'm gonna need you to know your credit score. Like, how many of y'all have money in stock? How many of y'all own a piece of the rock? See, as a people, we need to set way higher financial goals and have more power and control. We need to know less about sports and own more houses and stores. Own some shit you can really call yours. Cause newsflash, it ain't really your hood if you don't own no doors. See, this tainted system we live in is owned or be owned. You can buy or be loaned. And you can listen to these words or not. I'm just trying to get you to see the power of buying back the block. Thank you. <laughs> Brooklyn, what's up? Oh, I need more love than that. Brooklyn, what's up? Hey, y'all. Happy Saturday. We are so happy to be here. Y'all showed up and showed out. Y'all look good. Y'all smell good. I mean, y'all showed up for us. Um, we're so excited when we come to these cities and you guys show up for us, and not only for us, but show up for yourselves. Give, it a, give a round of applause for yourself for being here. I want to tell a very, very short story. Um, how many of us, by show of hands, are prepared to die? Not ready to die, but prepared to die. My mom is, um, unfortunately, very sick right now, and she's in the hospital. And I was in L.A. last week in the hospital with her. And I'm waiting in the waiting room and just hearing other families' conversations. And as they talk about their loved ones or grieve their loved ones, I'm listening. I'm eavesdropping on their conversations. And it was a few families that were talking about finance. And we're talking about, you know, who, who's... Daddy gonna leave the property to, and who, who's daddy gonna leave the property to, and whose name is on what's account, and what's being passed down to who, and who gets what, and who's in charge, and who's the beneficiary. And I said, gosh, I wonder how many of my people are having the same conversation. I wonder how many of my people got to put together a, a picnic or a church barbecue just to pay for the burial. I wonder how, my, how many of my people have life insurance, burial insurance, health insurance. And I'm listening to the conversation. I said, wow, how many of us as a people are prepared to die? See, this is not just a real estate class, not just a business class, not just a credit class, but this class is about leaving a legacy. And unfortunately, in order for us to leave a legacy, somebody has to die. And we have to be prepared to die. I'm a full-time actress and a full-time poet. Uh, and before I quit my job at Neiman Marcus in 2013 to act and do poetry full-time, I said, I'm going to start my own business. I've already learned the game on how to personal shop. I'm already in the fashion game. I've already built an amazing clientele from Floyd Mayweather to Kevin Hart to Julio Jones to Roddy White to Demarius Thomas to Von Miller to all these amazing clients that I have. I'm going to start my own business. So I started my own, what I thought was a business, but I later found out was just a hustle. And I made my first six figures in six months selling clothes. Cut Neiman Marcus out, cut the middleman out, and selling for myself. And Kevin Hart, I'll never forget, Kevin Hart said, Ern, I love you, I'm gonna support you, I'm gonna support your business, but what is your business? What's the name of your business? Where's my invoice, where's my receipt? And I was like, what do you mean what's the name of my business? And he's like, what, what is your company? And I, I had to go home that night, and I think this is back in 2013, I had to Google an LLC, I had no clue what an LLC is. But he planted the seed, and I went home, and I created my LLC, formalized my business, so now I'm doing legitimate business. So if I die, I'm leaving something behind, because I can't leave behind a hustle. We can't leave behind hustles. We have to leave behind assets and real companies, real corporations, things that have real titles that are attached to real paper, right? And that's what this class is about, formalizing our businesses, building legacies, pouring into our last name so we have something to leave behind for our heirs, for our family, so our last name lives on even when we are no longer on this earth, right? Because I believe that we cannot nation build until we can community build. And we cannot community build until we relationship build. And that relationship starts with you and me, husbands and wives, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, grandma and grandpas, aunties, uncles, cousins. As a people, we have to unify and relationship build. 
So we have people and relationships and family to leave assets to, right? So in the spirit of black and brown love and uniting as a people, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. I often wonder if I was hopelessly hanging from a cliff, would you reach your arm out to save me? If I was desperately gasping for air, staring in the face of death, would you press your brown lips against mine and bless me with one last breath or have they made you completely forget about me? Black men, I'm speaking to you because it seems as over the years you've lost your love for us, but your love for them grew. But let's not forget the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And it's not that she can't love you, it's just that black man, I was made for you, sculpted by the hands of God to love, feed, nurture, protect, and compliment you. And there is no ands, if, buts, or maybes. It was the black woman's breast milk that even fed the master's baby. When you were young and fell and scraped your knee, it was your mother who was there to tend the stitches and fix your britches. See, the black woman has always been the black man saving grace, but somewhere between L'Oreal commercials, tanning salons, lip injections, and ass shots, you've put us all in a cultural rat race, leaving us with just enough fucking self-esteem for us to chase. Chase a dying breed of a man that's running so far and fast from home, we feel the need to pick up the pace, spewing words of vulgarity, calling us every name in the book. But the Bible says unto a woman, a man is supposed to speak life. The Bible says the man that's found a good thing is the man that's found a wife. But you freely spit these words of obscenity, robbing us of our royal grace. How could you call a black woman a bitch and go home and lick your mama in the face? And society will have you thinking the grass is always greener on the other side, but trust and believe when shit hits the fan, the bounce in her hair won't stop her from walking you and those papers straight to chase, and on that we can bank. Black man, let me help you. The grass is greener where you water it. The more you water, the purer the fruit. And if you'd study the origin of your true history, you'd be watering at the root, cause mass media won't educate you on your royal oaks. See, they want to have you thinking our history started when we were shipped over in those boats. See, they want to make you forget about black queens like Amina, the queen of Zaria, Candace, the empress of Ethiopia, the queen of Kemet Nefertiti. See, those are the faces you will never see on TV. And black men don't think shit changed because ain't shit changed since the 60s. They doing everything but burning down churches and flags. Every chance they get, though, Kim Courtney and Chloe your ass. And I cried tears when I wrote these words because I'm standing here open like king. What about me? What about your queen? Don't let these false images of society make you run. There are still good black women out here walking fresh out of the pages of Proverbs 31. And we are crying out like I'm all you need. I'll sew the thread. I'll bake the bread. I'll keep you mentally, spiritually, emotionally fed. Black man, I will pull greatness out of you. I'm preparing myself for the day like the Bible says you. You leave your mother and father and we, we become one. I would happily give you your first son. We would make a great team and we would do things like I'll teach him how to tie his shoes and you teach him how to drill the screws and I'll make us all dinner and you, you could just do the dishes but mass media has convinced you to need two chains and need two bitches. But just like your mama when you fall, I'ma always be here to tend the stitches and fix your britches. And my soul grows weary and my heart sometimes stings because through all the trials and tribulations, every inch of my body still believes the black man is king. And in case you didn't hear me, yes, the black man is king, and I'll bow down at his presence. And I believe God cut me from his rib so I can mirror his essence. Black man, take care of it, and it will take care of you. Take care of home. Treat your woman like a precious stone. With clean hands and a clean heart, touch her soul. Thank you. Thank you, Brooklyn. Thank you, Brooklyn. All right, guys, once again, my name is Ernestine Morrison. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to be here. If you are not already following me on Instagram, please follow me today, Mrs. Ernestine Morrison. And I have the absolute pleasure of bringing up our next guest. Um, this man has been embedded into the fabric of our culture for over three decades now. Actor, philanthropist, activist, real estate developer, developing right here in the very city from which he came, hailing from the Bronx. I want you guys to give it up for Malik Yoba. <laughs> clap it up, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. King Malik, clap it up. Y'all gotta be louder than that. Clap it up, Malik Yoba.
Black folk love this park. Good morning, Queen. Good morning. Black folk kill me. Folks turn this park into the Hamptons. Y'all know them folks that barbecue right there. It always blows my mind when African American folks that live in public housing or the Dominicans uptown, they find a little patch of grass by the highway and they have their whole family that lives in America and the cousins that are visiting for the summer on one patch of grass. And I, I, seriously, as a person that gets to travel around the world, I marvel at that. Sometimes you don't even have to go around the world. You can just go 45 minutes upstate in the Hudson Valley or an hour and see New York State in a way that can make you feel good, real good about being alive, being a New Yorker, having access. And so today is all about access, amen. amen. Access to the process, amen. amen. Access to opportunity, amen. amen. So um, how many faithful people in this crowd? How many people live, truly, truly walk on faith? Raise your hand high and proud. Like the kind of faith that you have an inspiration or a desire or a dream for something in your life, you do not see the possibility based on your current circumstance, yet you still walk toward the unknown. It's okay if your hand's not going up because transformation is what this is about. In order for gentrification has to happen, the first thing that happens is the mind says, uh-uh, not that, this. Amen. When we think about gentrification as a, a real estate term, and I live three blocks from here, by the way. This is my hood. I'm very proud to live in Brooklyn. I'm very proud, seriously. I'm proud, like I literally like, can leave the White House, not in the current presidency, I love like this part of my life, the juxtaposition of being able to leave real fancy places around the world, stay in five star hotels, travel, pride, whatever it is, and walk on murder when I'm back. I love that because when I walk through the projects, and I do, y'all saw me pull up on my electric scooter, people are surprised because I'm real regular about it. And I love when people are like, yo Malik, what's up Malik? Like I'm their cousin. And what that does to me it reminds me, number one, where I'm from and why I'm from and why I do the things that I do in terms of the importance of being the manifestation of the dreams of our ancestors and showing those in close proximity that is possible, providing access to the process. A lot of folks think I'm just an actor and they think because if they don't see what I'm doing, then I ain't doing nothing. I like, you know, Biggie Puff said, you know, bad boys move in silence, right? So the real, the real bad moves are like how we just move with that intention toward the dream that we have that has been divinely given, walking on faith toward the impossible and saying the impossible is possible. And what I love about the manifestation of this dream, think about this. Jay Morrison sends out a smoke signal. He beats the drum, and the community responds. Amen. Amen. Think about that. He tapped into a need that we all have to belong. Amen. Amen. He tapped in the possibility, infinite possibility. A lot of times folks say that things aren't possible, and I love to hit them with this one. How many drops of water in the ocean? How many grains of sand on the beach? That's God's work. How many pieces of dirt right here? We can't count it. So when people stop themselves from reaching for the things that have been divinely given to them by fear or a lack of access or a lack of opportunity or a lack of the things right in front of them to tell them that it makes sense to pursue it, that's where we get tricked. Gentrification isn't about white folks coming and taking our neighborhoods. Gentrification is about someone deciding on a policy level that this community, for instance, that side of Myrtle is the opportunity zone. 
This side is not. Think about that. So if you have access to folks with money and they need to invest that money, or you have money you need to invest and not get taxed on it for at least 10 years, you can invest on that side of the street, right here in our neighborhood. The one thing <laughs> that the dude in the White House would like to take credit for, but there were a bunch of other folks behind him that pushed for the Opportunity Zone and the new tax bill to, to be enacted. That's the benefit for the community. The other great benefit for our community is the rent bill that just passed in New York State. Jay and I, after we met in LA, and talk about intention and connection, I was in LA on some other business. He posted a corner class he had just done in Leimert Park. I hit him on the DM. I had been trying to communicate with his wife, Ernestine, for months about the Tulsa Real Estate Fund because that man was living my dream. I knew I wanted to start a crowdfunding platform so people like us could have ownership of our community. Jay's going to talk about a building that's right around the corner. Mutali, where you at? Mutali, come here. This brother right here bought a building when he was 30 years old, 33 years old, literally between Carlton and Washington Park. And frankly, can I be real frank with the crowd? He's upside down, which means that he can't really afford to hold on to it. So we talk about the desire to share this information opportunity with our community. One of my dreams happened to be the same dream as his, which was I want some little kid that's living in these projects right now to feel like they have ownership of the community they live in. So what happens if the kid that lives in that project says, you know what, I only have $50, I only have $100, I only have $1,000, I want to put it in something. The kid is 10 years old. And by the time the kid is 20 or 18, about to go to college, that investment can mature, that person can pull down off that investment and have money to go to college. And a kid in the projects can look across the street in the opportunity zone to the non-opportunity zone that is now the opportunity zone because this man is determined to figure it out. And Jay's going to take us through a case study on how he could, we could figure this out to have ownership of a piece of property right in our neighborhood. So back to the L.A. trip. I meet this dude on the DM. He tells me he's at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. I drop everything I'm doing. I go meet him. He tells me he's ending the tour in Brooklyn and the Bronx. I said, absolutely not without me. You cannot do this in my hood. This was our intention to do it right here. We tried to do it first in front of Matali's building, but this couldn't fit right here in Myrtle. So here we are. So without further ado or delay, and Jay can tie it together with you, brother. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why you came today, the man of the hour, Mr. Jay Morrison. This is the Corner Class Tour Grand Finale. We just did three cities in three days. We capped it off in Newark, New Jersey. Hold on. I know exactly who that is. He, he coming. I got him. He coming. Hold on, Mr. Director. I got this. Mitali, I'm going to come back for you in a second as well. We capped this tour off in Newark, New Jersey with the Honorable Mayor Roz Baraka on South 10th Street in Newark, New Jersey and Springfield Ave, literally on the corner on which I left the drug game. We went back to South 10th and Springfield on the south side of Newark on the heart of the hood to cap off this 13 city tour, literally on the block where I was moving 30 bricks a day, serving dope to my community. And now we came back and gave hope to the community. And not just hope, hope with a blueprint. I'm not gonna hype you up, inspire you, give you hope and you go home and scratch your head like, what the hell I do now? You're gonna leave with an action step today on how we can beat poverty no matter where we come from, no matter what our background is, what your challenges is, what hand you've been dealt, Y'all looking at a former welfare kid, a former WIC kid, a former Section 8 kid, 11th grade high school dropout. Y'all looking at a three-time felon, a Rikers Island alumni, 
18 years old, C-74, mod three upper, facing three years to life in prison for a quarter kilo of coke and a load of 38 handgun. Did a year upstate on a one to three, cutting down trees for 13 cents a day in upstate New York at 18 years old. But, but jail didn't reform me. All jail was was criminal school. All we did is trade secrets and connects. I came home from prison, King, got right back at it with a new connect and with new game. A year later, caught a drug trafficking charge in Cumberland, Maryland, facing 15 years in prison. Luckily, these, these crooked police illegally searched my vehicle. I got a suppression hearing, got the charges thrown out, had to plead guilty to 18 months in prison. That 18 months in prison didn't reform me. I'm locked up in a cell with a double life for a man who's been locked up for 30 years in his life for two homicides. That's my cellmate for eight months in prison. Mike Lipscomb Bay. Got extradited to New Jersey for a secret indictment, came home from New Jersey on an intense supervision parole program in the year 2000. And two, found myself at 22 years old with three felonies in three different states. Found myself out on bail in Maryland, on parole in New York, out on bail in New Jersey, and still trapping. Get rich or die trying in real life. Penitentiary chances in real life. Graduated the parole program. Got introduced to mortgages and real estate and finances while on parole. 22-year-old Jay was at a men's group on Saturday mornings. I had a six o'clock curfew. I had a monthly budget I had to keep. I had weekly mentoring meetings I had to go to on this program called ISP, Intense Supervision Parole. My parole officer was like RoboCop. He'd pop up on you at two in the morning, three in the morning at your window. I was so sick of parole, my, 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 my bright idea at 22 years old was, you know what? I'm about to turn myself in, go back to prison, finish my time, fuck that parole. I'm gonna go back to jail and finish my time, come home with no papers. I tell this grand idea to my mentorship group and Pastor Antoine Thomas, a 37-year-old pastor in Plainfield, New Jersey, said, all right, Jay, I get it. You want to go back, you want to finish your time, you hate parole. My wife's a processor at a mortgage company. Her name's Lashida Thomas. Here's her business card. Go interview and try a job as a loan officer. You're pretty clean cut, you're pretty well smoke spoken, you know how to hustle. Try this new hustle. Put my best khakis on, my little button up shirt. Went to the mortgage company, they hired me on an all commission job as a loan officer, loan originator. Taught me how to fill out a loan application, what a mortgage was, what a FICO score was, how credit worked, how financing worked. My Aunt Karen gave me a shot, let me refinance her house. I made a $2,600 check. My grandmother gave me a shot, let me refinance her house, made a $3,300 check. I said, damn, I made six grand for pushing papers? This shit cool. Then my mom, while I was home from prison, my mom said, man, I want to get a house. I need 3,000 down. I said, mom, Look in my closet in a Timberland box. Gave my mom three racks. She bought a $100,000 house at 3% down. In three years, that same house went up in value $100,000. This is my real life. While I'm on parole, right? So I'm in the mortgage company. I graduate the ISP program. Soon I graduate, I go right back to the trap. My mom's now in foreclosure. She got a tax lien on the property and in foreclosure because my stepfather, rest in peace, was suffering from a 20-year heroin addiction. So all the money he brought into the house went right back into the streets to my colleagues. So mom, I'm riding around in a brand new red Lincoln Navigator I bought here in Queens, cash off the lot, in real life. But I'm saying, how I'm riding around in a brand new cashed out car, my mom in foreclosure, that's some corny shit. So I sold my V, downgraded vehicles, paid my mom foreclosure and tax lien off. She said, man, when I sell, I'm going to take care of you. I said, mom, you got it. Don't worry about it. My mom sold the house. We made 90-something thousand as a family first, 90,000. We ain't renovated. We ain't do nothing to the house. I trapped out the house. But we owned it. We lived in it. 
cashed out 90,000 just by living there for three years. My mom gave me 33,000. I'm like, oh shit, this real estate shit, really cool. I just made 33 racks, clean, free and clear, King, on a legal flip. Took half my 33, went and see my connect and got a half a bird. In real life. Oh, habits die hard. But the seeds were being planted slowly. God was grooming me for something bigger. The seeds were being planted. I was hustling in Baltimore at 17 years old. I had a bracelet just like this, the one my, my wife just bought me for my anniversary. Thanks, honey. 17 years old, I'm in Baltimore, my OG. I had a, I had a Rolex watch at 17, blue face of Mariner in real life. My OG was like, Slim, you could buy all the cars and jewelry you want, but God ain't making no more land. I'm like, that shit sound cool. I want a new watch. But the seeds were being planted. I'm giving y'all the journey, y'all. The seeds were being planted. So on that same trip, I bought that half a bird. I, had, I thought I had the perfect drug route. See, now I was in prison, I learned that I'm a three-time felon. My next time, I'm going away forever, ever. So I said, yo, I can't touch nothing. So I sent my ride or die at the time up to Yonkers to see my connect. She go from Yonkers to Irvington, New Jersey, to Maple Gardens, where she broke down the work, put it in a blender, sprayed that thing down, compressed it, made that new brick in real life. Took that thing down, 95, see who she had to see, collect that cash and bring the cash back in real life. But I ain't know the guy who my man was going to see was setting my man up because he got a gun charge in DC. And he told the people, I know something coming down from Jersey in real life. So she got jammed up, he got jammed up. She's screaming her head off on the phone, come and get me! Now I'm like, damn, if she tell, I thought I had the perfect drug operation. But if she tell, I'm done, done, two duns, done, done. So we bail her out. I go get my lawyer who beat that legal search and seizure. Guess what? Them crooked ass cops illegally searched her vehicle, had no warrant. Threw the whole shit out in real life. But then I'm like, yo, that's too close of a chance. This coke shit ain't working. So I got my man who had the dope and the heroin, I got with him, and we started pumping dope and heroin in North because the coke route wasn't working. In real life. Started breaking down the heroin, getting the morphine, coming up to the Bronx Malik to get that raw brown dope in real life. Brought it back to South Tampa, Springfield, North New Jersey, moving 30 bricks a day in real life. But then I'm like, damn. I'm out here with real killers, real drug dealers. I'm talking about guys that'll get it done for 2,500. Take your whole life for a rack on a bad day. So what they gonna do to me is the big fish. I'm out here on the block, a three-time felon, post 25 years old. My daughter was born while I was in prison in New York. Teenage dad, first time I seen my daughter was on the visiting room floor. Here I am, a three-time felon, just beat a trafficking charge, just beat another conspiracy charge. Now I'm on a block selling dope in one of the murderous cities in the, in the country. So I asked myself, approach 25 years old, Jay, where are you gonna be when you're 30? This ain't a fake ask myself. I'm talking about six in the morning on the block, we got our drug line going, I'm watching my crew, and I'm thinking to my fucking self, like, where are you gonna be when you're 30? All I could think was, dead or in jail. So I said, nah, man, I'm committed to this game, fuck that. I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. My first pack was at 15 years old. I sold crack to my aunts, my uncles, sold crack to my dad. My dad taught me how to cook up crack in a stove and a microwave. This is my real life. But I try to shake it off, like nah, I could do this drug thing, I got it, I got it, I just need a better route. But I still could only picture myself dead or in jail. So if I knew that my route, my path was not a successful path, now I ain't no fucking dummy. 
So I knew at that time I had to choose a better route. So I asked myself again, I said, damn, Jay, that real estate shit wasn't that bad. It wasn't that hard. You made some money, you see how real estate work, but you never gave real estate the same energy you gave the corner. You never gave nothing in your life since 15 years old the same energy you gave that block. So I asked myself, was I a true hustler or was I a drug dealer? Because see, a true hustler could hustle anything. Only a damn drug dealer could sell drugs. I said, no, I'm the man. If I put this same energy, this same swag, this same charisma, this same hustle, full time in a real estate, I know I could pop it off. So that day I made a decision for my family, for my daughter, for my legacy, for me. I didn't wait for my next flip. I didn't wait till I got 100,000 more. I didn't, that day, I still have product left. I gave the rest of my work to my man. You got the block, fam. Crack my trap phone, King, out the, out the, driving the car, I remember. Crack my trap phone out the car. Say, yo, I'm gonna go full steam ahead into this real estate put my all into it and see what I got. The journey wasn't easy. My first nine months only made $2,500. I'm in a mortgage office every day grinding, 7 a.m. I had a 93 Mercury Grand Marquis, had a little hoop ride. Driver's side door handle missing. Shoestring holding my glove compartment together. No CD player. I'm going to work listening to Young Jeezy Thug Motivation with a portable DVD player in my seat. In my real life. Nine months go by, I'm learning the business. I get the business, I understand LTVs, ARVs, creative financing, hard money, FHA, 203K, all that shit. But I ain't making no money though. I'm borrowing money from my mom to pay my mortgage. I got my first property, two family. Got a single family under my name for my mom. Got another two family, 100% financing. But I'm not making no money though. Nine months go by, I start calling back uptown. What's the prices? What's the prices? I'm back. Pressure was on. That same month, I was gonna go back to the streets. I made, closed seven deals, made 13,000. Next month, my pipeline panned out, made 30,000. Four months later, off a of foreclosure, I made 93,000. Within my first three years in real estate, made over a million cash in my real life. So I took that and kept building on the business, learning the business. Mind you, it's 14 years in the business now. So now through all that drama, all that adversity, and why I tell you all that is not just to inspire you. I want you to see yourself in me. You may not have come from the corner trap. You might be in the corporate trap. You might be in the college trap. You might be in the cultural trap. All I'm trying to say is that if you don't see success for yourself in the trap or the vision that you in, you got to do something different. And I'm showing you, although I went through abuse as a kid, as I was a high school dropout, although all the stories I told you, three times fell, I have no college education. Teenage dad. All that adversity, though, you could relate to some form of it, but what I'm saying is that from being intentional, I was able to create something out of my life in my real life, against all odds. So I stand before you today as the CEO and founder of the Jay Morrison Academy, Inc. 500's number 588, fastest growing company in the country. Let them pass. The J. Morrison Academy, our own school, I formed five years ago, educated over 80,000 students in the last five years. Outside of being Inc. 500, number 588 fastest growing companies in the country, we are number 13 top educational companies in the country. The corner boy, the high school dropout. Simultaneously in that same five years, I had the same dream as Malik Yoba and many of us, Sean King, many of us. 
How can we participate in group economics? How can we build Black Wall Street in real life? How can we collaborate and pull our money together in real life? Not a GoFundMe, not a collection plate, not a donation. How can we break bread, King, in real life? So four years ago, after the Friday Great Uprising, when they burned down that CVS in, uh, in Baltimore, the day after I seen it on the news, I rented a red megaphone from Party City, drove down to Baltimore to North and Penn, supported our community on the front line, on the ground as a CEO, fighting for justice for Freddie Gray. I link up with a king I don't even know. He like, hey king, let's do a march around the corner. I'm like, I ain't never done a march before, but all right. So 13 of us go around the corner with the red megaphone. Justice! Justice! Black Lives Matter! We come back around, it's like 40 of us now. He like, let's do it again. I'm like, all right. Justice! Justice! We go around the corner again, bro. It's like 300 of us behind us. I'm like, oh, shit. Then a CNN reporter was there. He's like, hey, why don't you guys uh, go march somewhere? I'm like, yeah, let's go to uh, Mondawmin Mall where all the activity at the mall was happening. Then he was like, no, why don't you go to City Hall? I'm like, how far is City Hall? I got Louis sneakers on. <laughs> Dead ass in my real life. I'm out here protesting with $1,300 sneakers on. As it's a couple miles, I said, fuck it, let's go. My red megaphone, we marching down. I look behind me, there's 2,000 people behind me. March to City Hall. Standing up for our people in my real life. After that Freddie Gray uprising, BET bust a bunch of Bloods and Crips from Baltimore up to New York for this big panel. Mark Lamont Hill was there, Tamika Mallory. It was a solutions panel. What's the solutions for our community? What are we gonna do? So one of the guys in Baltimore stood up and was like, we need to build a Black Wall Street, yo. So you want to build a Black Wall Street? I said, you're talking my language. Economics, that's my language. I said, if our community fails economically in this generation, that's on my watch. So I said, well, what's a Black Wall Street look like, though, in real life? It's cool to hashtag that shit. But what infrastructure, what organization, how do you organize that for us to do business together transparently in a regulated way, in a way we can trust each other equitably? So I started doing research on how to pull our dollars together through new legislation. Fast forward four and a half years, January 1st of last year, we launched the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, raised several million dollars our first week, the world's first black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of America. <laughs> Believe it or not, dealing with these Negroes, we had massive support. We've raised nearly $7.8 million from 9,498 investment partners, people that are partners with us. Then, I'm thinking I'm gonna get backlash from the other folks. I get backlash from my own goddamn people, a whole set of bloggers with a ham on me. It's a scam, don't do it, don't trust them. Our own people. He ain't gonna do nothing with the money, he ain't gonna live on the money. Man, we just closed on 98 unit apartment complex two weeks ago. Just funded 28 units last week. Just funded a black woman in Louisiana 14 units a couple months ago. Another black woman seven units a couple months before that. In real life. Estimated portfolio value once stabilized, 14 and a half million. We own a 30,000 square foot building, 2.6 acres, in an opportunity zone in East Point, Georgia, in real life. Fuck y'all talking about. And so I got the scrutiny. And then all the scrutiny, next thing we know, we get subpoenas. Then the SEC and the FBI, they want to they send us your emails and we want to know what's going on. Already, King. Already. Y'all know how they took out Marcus Garvey? Marcus Garvey was the first black man in America to raise capital for our people. Raised $800,000 back in 1919 through the Black Star Line. Our own people, somebody in Marcus Garvey's organization, 
His treasurer set him up, and the FBI took Marcus Garvey out and extradited him out of the country. Marcus Garvey brought 20,000 black people to Madison Square Gardens back in the 1920s from all over the world. Here I am trying to carry the torch in our own people laying the foundation to try to take me out. I know what's going on. I'm not slow. You giving them folks an example and a reason to create doubt in your head about me. Ain't no paperwork on me. Ain't no receipts on me. So them folks will take me out. Sean King, if that moment ever comes, I'm going to need you to stand up for me because you are a media man. You the CNN of our generation. I know what they do when I see the plays. I'm the first black man since Marcus Garvey to ever raise this much capital for our people. In real life. This ain't no bragging, bodacious shit. I come here humbly. But I'm going to talk my shit. This facts. Ain't no moguls do it. Ain't no rappers do it. Ain't none of them do it. Ain't no politicians do it. None of them stood up. Ain't none of them come to the hood and get his game. 63 quarter classes in four years. Free for the hood in every hood. Ain't nobody did that shit. They talk that shit, they hashtag that shit. I'm putting this work. Every trip. And I need y'all to have my back. That's just the facts of it. I step out and take the doors. I'm taking the risk. Listen, I talk to some influential, way more influential than me. I got a little punk ass 300,000 followers. It's my life, there were tens of millions of followers. They're like, man, listen, I ain't doing that shit. Nobody want the risk. Nobody want to step out. They know what the exposure is. Nobody wants the reputational risk of, if I, if I allow everybody to invest with me, shit, shit go wrong, what's gonna happen? I'm taking a risk for us because we, we ain't got it. What's the fun that we got? So our fund, we opened up, everybody can go to the fund. We, we can't even raise capital right now until we get our new qualification, which will hopefully, prayerfully be happening soon. But I still want you guys to get on a waiting list if you're not a partner. I see one of our, come up, Ken, come up with your, with your, with your Treff Life certificate, come up. Anybody that's Treff Life, say Treff Life. Say Treff Life. We opened the fund up where our people could invest as little as 500, come on, come up. Show, show off your plaque, shit. You earn that. Yeah, yeah, real life, yeah. That's my partner right there. That's our partner right there, Treff Life. Treff Life. We all partners. We created a fund where you can invest in own assets, a portfolio for your family for as little as $500. Have equity and ownership, get an 8% preferred return and 50% profits on what the fund creates in the future. In real life. Thank you, King, appreciate you. Clap for this man, my partner. Uh. That was a dream of mine. So when Mutale and others in our community are being gentrified and have issues or need funding, we could be the capital partner together. King Shaw King, he pulled up on us today. We never met in person, we built online. But when we did Tulsa Fund, he was a partner, an investor. Put his money where his mouth is. Yo, listen, we can't keep waiting around for somebody to do for us what we can goddamn do for ourselves. What you waiting for? Take action. So now I wanna, I gave y'all a big rundown of my, my real life. I'm gonna do some words for you. I'm gonna ask King Sean King to say up and give you some words. And then I gotta get to my actual lecture. This is the appetizer. I know my team giving me time limits because we got started late. I don't give a shit. My Brooklyn family got to get this food. We got to get this game. When I say hope man, y'all say hope man. Hope man. Hope man. Hope man. Yeah, that's me. We grew up selfish and savage, almost classless. Selling drugs to our aunts and uncles was like a rite of passage. But now we own assets, black owned schools, historic real estate funds, we call it black magic. No more drug traffic. I put away childish things, adopted some new habits. 
No more saying nigga and bitch. Man, we passed that. No more saying nigga and bitch. Man, we passed that. No more slave talking. We ain't blowing cash on new shiny things. We call it sleepwalking. This the elevation of the culture. But y'all only respect rappers, though. I made millions without rapper sports as far as trappers go. I made millions without rapper sports as far as trappers go. I did it the best without rapper sports as far as I know. If it ain't me, I salute the king. No more ego. No more crab in the bucket. My king, like Hove said, we off that. If you the one leading our people, shit, I'll fall back. I'll fall in line. Like a soldier, I own mine. We got to kill that pride and division. It's about time. We unite around one common vision until we all climb and put our self-interest aside until we all shine. Thank you. That was your appetizer. Before I get into this lecture, I'm going to give us a blueprint on how to beat poverty. Proven blueprint. I'm breaking all this shit. All these chains, all these curses on our generations. This wealth gap. I got us. Y'all on my back. I got us. Before I give you all this basic blueprint and lecture, I want to bring up a brother that's so I'm inspired by. I'm a fan, and I appreciate and I love him for his contribution to our community. We got to come together like Voltron, a collective, and use all our talents and gifts to build something better for ourselves. I believe in reparations and all that shit, but I also believe in self-determination. That's doing for yourself what you can do for yourself. Stop waiting for somebody else to come save you. I don't care what religion you are. God said himself, faith without works is dead. God said, I'm not doing it. He told you. Pray all you want. Faith without works is dead. You got to put the work in, in real life. And this brother has been doing it. I want y'all to get a big round of applause. I want him to share some words with us. Anything you want to say, King, I want to give you a couple minutes. Give it up for the brother, our CNN, our Fox News, our media, our hero, our historian, our brother, my partner in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, Mr. Sean King. Yo, put your hands together for Jay one more time. Listen, I'm here to learn today as well, but I just have a few quick things to share. One, this is beautiful, right? No, this is not going to be on the news. But I need us to understand something. We don't need it to be on the news. We don't need anybody else's validation. We don't need anybody else to tell our story. We can tell our own stories in our own way and do business the way we need to do it. And that's what we're doing right now. I have three quick things I want to share with you. First and foremost, I just want you to hear from me how much I respect this man and the Morrison family and the work that they're doing. And as Jay said, I'm a partner in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, put my money where my mouth is, but we need to all hear me, support him and support this family because when we're strong, nobody can take us out. Do you hear what I'm saying? So you showing up on the corner matters. Also show up in the comments. All right. Also show up with your money as we pitch plans and ideas, support it with your life. But I want you to hear from me that I, I put my name on him and he puts his name on me, that we hold each other up like that. And that's the type of risk we have to take. All that trash that people talk. I believe in him. I believe in his integrity. I believe in his business. And that's why you're here. You, you do, too. Most of you, you know me from Instagram or Twitter, but I'm actually a historian by training. My undergraduate and graduate degrees are in history. And I need you to understand something. Even Jay has referenced it. Everything we need to do today and tomorrow, we've already done. Everything we need to build today, tomorrow, next year, we've done that before. It's named the Tulsa Real Estate Fund because 100 years ago, we did it. When he references Marcus Garvey, 100 years ago, Garvey did it. We're not trying to reinvent something new. We're trying to go back to our roots and do what we've already done. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
So I just want you to hear from me that I believe in this family. I want you to hear from me that where we're going, we've already done that. And then the last thing, and I'll close, I just want you to understand that every tool and resource that you need to get to the next step that he's about to share, you have it right now. Listen, you may not have what you need to get to step nine or 10. Stop focusing on step seven, step eight. You have right now in your life exactly what you need to get to step two. And he's gonna break down for us and share the practical lessons and give us the wisdom and understanding so we can take that step together. But here's where I'm concerned. Sometimes we focus so much on what we don't have because we're so focused on 10 steps ahead that we miss taking step one and step two. And I need you to feel good about where you are right now because you have exactly what you need to take the next step. I have it and you have it and we're gonna take it together. Let's learn together and let's support one another, all right? I love you, you're beautiful. Thank you all for being here today, all right? Take care, everybody. Thank you. What stood out to me so um, significantly that King Sean just said is we gotta support this family. And this is a family wealth class. I'm here to support your family, not you the individual. I'm here to support your last name. We gotta put more value on our last name. Like Dame Dash said, we always hustling for Jay. I want Jay to look good. What about the Morrisons though? What about your last name? All three, everybody scream out your last name. One, two, three, Morrisons! That name. So what I'm gonna teach you today is not just a generational wealth class. I'm gonna teach you how to build intergenerational wealth. That means more than one generation. This is an intergenerational wealth class. You guys heard earlier from my partners and my protégés, fruit off my tree, King Will and King Isaac, two kings I'm so impressed by. It started in our online curriculum. They ain't grow up with me. I don't know them. They wasn't on my block. But when I launched my school in 2014, they tapped in. When Will had an opportunity to get on the phone with me, he paid for a one-on-one -on -one consultation to go over his business. He took that and ran with it, came back six months later, and got one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Did that in the last three years, built two seven-figure businesses in three years. In real life. For his last name. King Isaac was scrolling on World Star Hip Hop and YouTube and saw an ex-drug dealer turn mogul, does real estate, said, I like that, let me see what he got going on. Bought the course that night. So I blow money on everything else, I'm gonna check him out. Tapped in and in 90 days made 12,500, wholesaling real estate. Still was playing in the streets, pulled up on me at an event in Philly, said, King, man, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence. I said, you gotta focus. Came up in a Range Rover. I see you, young king. But you're not focused, though. You closing a couple deals here, trapping here. A couple deals here, trapping here. You where I was at. You got to go all in and bet on yourself. My Aunt Karen texted me this morning. Says, I said, nephew, I'm so proud of you. She probably watched this live stream. I said, auntie, it all started in your living room. When I left the streets, I was waiting for my first two family to close. I slept in my aunt's living room. I left South Tempest Springfield and got into mortgages. I slept in a queen size bed in my aunt's living room to start this journey. When I made millions, blow money fast, cause I was caught in a cultural trap, I wanted to impress all of you and impress all the women I was trying to have. And I thought the money would keep coming and the market crashed and then I crashed and then I filed bankruptcy. And when I was bouncing back from those financial hardships, I got linked up with Emory Jones. As a mentor, he was coming home from prison. Some guys I knew in prison, knew him in prison. We knew the same guys. Talking to Emory, who's partners with Jay-Z on Rock Nation and other ventures and Duce and all that. I'm thinking like, I'm on now. I had a little record label going. I'm like, yeah, I'm on now. I'm at the Rock Nation offices. 
I'm trying to push my music to Emory. This me, the real estate guy, I had a record label in 2009. And we're like, man, listen, everybody trying to do music. When I was in prison, I heard you was the man in real estate. He said, King, do what you do best. I'm like, shit. He bust my little music dream bubbles. But I listened to him as a mentor, as a big homie. I went, got my real estate license again after not having it for a few years. I was a loan officer, real estate agent, developer, investor. I did all of it in the business. That's how I know so much. I, I, I dialed in. When I go in, I go in. Got hired by Sotheby's International Realty, prominent properties franchise. NBC liked me. I went on NBC to, um, and did a show with an NFL athlete, Muhammad Wilkerson, first round draft pick of the Jets. NBC said, NBC said, I like you on TV, come back, bring some more clients. Became a celebrity realtor on TV on NBC, open house NYC on Sunday mornings. Then a Today Show saw that and was like, hey, can you do this on live TV? I said, hell yeah. Never did it, but yeah. Then I found myself on a Today Show on Channel 4, NBC, as a real estate expert. I'm talking about the corner boy trap star on NBC talking real estate shit. And started building my brand, wrote my book, and dove into the business. And now, in the last 15 years, I've built and managed over $20 million of real estate and business assets in my real life. Now let's get to the meat. This is your lesson. Everybody tap in. If you can't see and you want to see, you better find a spot. Be intentional. What's intentional mean? Say it again. Say it louder. Say it like you're from Brooklyn. On purpose. When we was hustling in the streets, we heard a plug was somewhere, oh, we got to the plug on purpose. Well, no Sundays, Mondays, to Mexico. Where, where's that? Where he at? I'm going to see him. I need to connect by any means. You got to be the same way about building family wealth. We're going to start off this class. Let's define wealth. What the hell is wealth? What are we chasing? What are we after? Y'all tell me, Brooklyn, what is wealth? Assets, where you want to live? Assets? Abundance of assets. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to break this class up. It's a little uneven. So I'm going to start right here with Queen, 61 years young. I remember you. Everybody on this side of Queen, y'all going to be one. Matter of fact, no, we good with the camera. Cameras are, Queen, you good. Cameras are divider. Everybody on this side going to be one team. Everybody on this side going to be one team. We're going to have... Our B team and our K team. Got it? We in BK, ain't we? We in BK? Am I right, Burrow? I need B make some noise. Yo, K, turn up. They played y'all. I'm going to give you one more shot, B. B, make some noise. K, turn up. Uh, let's get it. Let's learn this together. What wealth is, I need my B to say, an abundance of assets. And I need K to say, that supersede liabilities. Part of my writing, y'all. Everybody say, and debt. B, one more time, an abundance of assets. Okay, that supersede liabilities. Everybody and debt. The biggest thing we got to learn as a community is that wealth is not about just your assets, your bag, or your cash. You could get a big old bag. You could be up a mill. But if your liabilities and debts, your lifestyle's a mill a year, you're broke. See, what happens is we start off struggling. Then we get a little better job. Now we got a six-figure job. We got a good government job. But as we make more money, all we do is increase our lifestyle. If all you do is increase your lifestyle, you make more money, all you're doing is breaking even. So in order for us to build wealth, what's, what's abundance mean? Say a lot. 
Say a lot. lot. Say overflow. Overflow. So we need an overflow of assets. Name some assets. Stocks. Real estate. Businesses. Precious metals. Life insurance. I'm going to speed through this, but I want you all to take notes and write this down. For those recording, that's fine. Live stream. Share this message. It's on you. Share this message. We are on media. Everybody know we here. New York Radio know we here. The papers know we here. But we don't need their validation. We're going to validate our damn self. So we say we need an overflow of assets. You got to have an overflow of real estate, overflow of cash, overflow of stocks, overflow of precious metals. But it can't just be the overflow. Your black ass got to supersede the liabilities. What supersede mean? Say surpass. Say surpass. Say move beyond. So our assets got to surpass our liability and our debt. So as what we're going to describe as a CEO of your last name, your focus has to be to make sure that your family is, you, you, you learning the information. I'm going to break down the game for you, how to get the assets. You're going to get the bag. I got you. But I'm not in your household. I can't control how you control the bag. So you got to be intentional enough on purpose. Everybody say on purpose to keep your liabilities and expenses low. I'm not saying don't live a good lifestyle. I love nice things too. But I make sure that my assets overflow the nice things that we buy. That's our family discipline. Because I didn't inherit wealth. I inherited the dope game. I want my heirs to inherit wealth and assets and not a bunch of debt. Your kids can't enjoy your goddamn Louis belt. They can't benefit from that vacation and sparkles in the club. How you gonna pass down some sparkles? <laughs> they need buildings, they need stocks, they need precious metals, they need life insurance. All y'all filming me now got insurance on your phone and got insurance on your goddamn life. Not all y'all, not her. <laughs> Everybody but her. But we're not being intentional enough. So part of being intentional is we got to be the CEOs of our last name. What's CEO mean? Everybody say chief executive officer. That's not everybody. That's still not everybody. That's not everybody. I'm looking around for who ain't talking. The CEO is a chief executive officer of an organization. But what a CEO does, I need my B to say, the CEO is the leader. B, B say leader. leader. I need K to say, and visionary. and visionary. Understand that somebody in the family gotta be the leader and visionary of the family. Meaning, the person that has his or her head up looking at the future success of, say your last name on three, one, two, three. Yes. Of that last name. You can't just be thinking about how we look now or what a Jones is doing that shit. We got to do that too. You can't make your focus trying to keep up with the trends and the Joneses and your last name ain't Jones. Your focus as the leader and visionary of your family is to make sure the Morrisons are straight in 2035. In 2065. In the year, th what the, the foundation I'm laying today, I go so hard. I told my daughter this morning, I'm working so hard for you to lay down a foundation to pass you down as my heiress. To set you up how I never was set up. So you can set your heirs, my heirs, 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 my heirs, heirs, heirs up. Look what we built off what my granddaddy did. That's that OG shit, real big homie shit. Real king, real big dog, big fish. We got a car blocking somebody. If you are the Nissan Maximum or Maxima, license plate HVN27, you know the rest. That's you. You're blocking somebody. So we got to be intentional about being the leader for our family. Who here is willing to step up and be that for your last name? Raise your hand. Say, I will. I will. Say, I do. I do. Say, I got us. I got us. 
Now scream your last name. One, two, three. Stand up for your family. See, we can't community build till we can family build. We can't family build till we can relationship build. That's why I said we got to put all the pride and ego aside. That's what's stopping us from building, especially as black men. Everybody got to be the big dog. Everybody got to lead. You can't even focus on leading the community right now, leading nothing to you can lead your last name. And one of the first steps is preparing your heirs with an abundance of assets. And having financial responsible practices that supersede your liabilities. So we talked about wealth, talked about the CEO, and what we want to leave is a legacy. What is a legacy? What you pass on, what else? What you leave behind? I'm going to give us a definition, and I'm going to give you all some game. I'm not a college student. How I learn what I know, I'm okay knowing I don't know everything. And what I don't know, I research. I'm talking about a quick little Google search. So I Google search legacy. I knew what it was, but I ain't really know how to define it. And I know these things. Self-taught, self-educated from the mud. What legacy is, I need my B to say, the amount of assets, one more time, B, wake up. The amount of assets and money. Okay? I want you guys to say, one leaves behind for their heirs. Legacy is all about the amount of assets or money, wealth, that you leave behind for your heirs. So as a CEO of your last name, you got to really ask yourself. That's what my wife was saying. I had to ask myself, if I die today, you don't know when you're going to go. Stop fronting. You don't know. So if you die today or next week, you got to ask yourself, damn, what do my heirs get? Ask yourself. Think about it. Self-reflection moment. Everybody. God forbid you went today. You went tomorrow. What do your heirs get? And if you don't like that picture, just like I ain't like that picture on the corner of North New Jersey, do something about it then. If you died today, what would your siblings get? What would your children get, your heirs? Have you set them up? Have you been intentional about that? On purpose. So what I've done as a CEO of my last name is I made it a point, like, listen, them Rolls Royce trucks is beautiful. I want one of them so bad. Hell yeah, I want one. It's a lot of shit I want. But I know that my focus got to be the needs of my last name. My family don't need a Rolls Royce truck right now. But they can inherit my death benefit from my $2 million life insurance policy, though. They can inherit our business portfolio, though. So I focus on pouring capital and money back into my businesses, into real estate, into assets, into life insurance, a whole life policy where I keep putting money in, tax-free, can earn interest for me. And any time I could borrow that money and buy more assets, we'd have pay myself back whenever I want, but my family still get my death benefit. That kind of game. So you got to be intentional if you really want to be the true big homie about how do I set my last name up if I go today, tomorrow, or next week. That's what King Nipsey Hussle did. He rapped about it. He told you, oh, rest in power, Nip. Everybody said, rest in power, Nip. One more time, rest in power, Nip. So many students came to me and said, y'all found out Jay Morrison Academy from Nipsey. I found out about Tulsa Real Estate from, from Nipsey. When we dropped Tulsa, Nipsey inboxed me, hit me up, bro. FaceTime me down in New Orleans. Like, yo, everybody buying Tulsa, bro, this shit is dope. He rapped about million dollar life insurance on my body on my flesh, but you got to live it out in real life. So we talked about legacy. Now I want to give you the blueprint. This is where it gets super good. Y'all get some game already? When I say hope man, y'all say hope man. Hope man. Hope man. Hope man. Yeah, that's me. Here's the blueprint. 
There's four steps to how we beat poverty or how we achieve abundance from wherever you're at right now. Some of you already got a little abundance. You want a little more. Some of you trying to get your first taste. God forbid life happens. Sometimes we fall off. Life can happen as an entrepreneur. I, I accept that. You can fall off. Businesses can crash, real estate markets, stock markets. But are you astute and wise enough? Are you informed enough to be able to bounce back at any time? See, I know enough to know I can always put my family on from here on out as long as I'm breathing. I know too much. So the first step to us beating poverty, the first step, we call it the RBCs, our brand new curriculum, real estate, business, and credit. But I'm going to tell you about that curriculum. Real estate, business, and credit is one of the foundational things that we all have to know as CEOs for our last name. This earth, this rock, is one big ball of real estate. And as my OG said, God ain't making no more land. Let me show you how dope real estate is. Quick survey. Everybody, I'm watching all y'all. Some of y'all be too cool in the back. I'm watching y'all in the back. By show of hands right now, who here lives somewhere? Can you text him? He, tell your man he's texting right now. He ain't raising his hand. Yeah. You live somewhere? All right, you on. 10% of Americans own 88% of the real estate. 10% of Americans, 10% of the American population own 88% of all the real estate. So everybody else is what? Renters. Say customers. Tenants. The licks. <laughs> so the more, you own, the more you know about real estate, you become in that ownership class instead of the customer class. This park we in right now is what? The house you live in is what? The restaurant you ate in is what? The hotel I just stayed at is what? Where you go worship at church, mosque, or temple is what? The school your kids go to is what? That cars that gave you all that got there student loan debt is what? Everywhere we go is real estate. But do you know how to evaluate the building? Do you know how to buy the strip mall? Do you know how to acquire the land? That's why real estate business credit is so critical. Because everywhere you go, everything you do is centered in real estate. And the easiest way to buy real estate is by leveraging credit. It's not just knowing real estate, but it's knowing the real estate business and knowing entrepreneurship in general. So what we got to do, your first step, there's step one to our formula, step one, write your ones down, easy blueprint, is we got to be intentional about being informed. Everybody say informed. informed. We got to be intentional about being educated. Everybody say be educated. We have to grow our knowledge base. Everybody say knowledge base. And we got to learn new strategies. Everybody say strategy. She's, what I realized, look, I come out the hood, y'all. And we often think that we got a credit problem, that we got a cash problem. I ain't got no money. I'm broke. Oh, my credit jacked up. That's not your problem or why you can't excel economically. What's called upward economic mobility. It ain't your money. It ain't your goddamn credit. It's you don't know enough about enough. You underinformed. You undereducated. You lack strategy. But today I'm gonna give you the game today. Everybody say, give me the game, Jay. Yeah. That ain't everybody. Give me the game, Jay. Yeah. Here's how we start this. You gotta be intentional about being informed after you commit to that. And I'm gonna give you an opportunity in our curriculum where we break it down just how I'm doing right now. Very plain, very relatable. A little entertaining sometimes. Education ain't got to be boring, but we can learn this. So now after you get educated and informed, you commit to that. Step two is understanding credit. Credit is the foundation of how we can all get access to a bag. Everybody. A big bag. No matter where you coming from, get that shit out your head. You telling yourself no, you ain't even learned a lesson yet. I know you, I'm talking to you, that person. The first rule of credit I learned from the wealthy. 
I had the opportunity of breaking the corporate America and getting around all these wealthy folks, wealthy families. And I'm over there like a spook that's about a door. I'm soaking up all the game. Black Robin Hood. Take the game from the rich, come give it back to the hood. The first thing I realized is that in our communities, we stress about credit. These mugs, they don't give a damn about no credit. All credit is to them is a paper game. Grandmama told us, don't get that credit. Oh, I don't want no debt. Oh, 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 I bought it all cash. I'm the man, I bought it all cash. You dummy. You just appreciated your cash. You proud of it. In the hood, that means something. You bought it all cash. Why not use their money? So the first rule I learned about credit was this. All credit can be rebuilt. Everybody say rebuilt. rebuilt. Everybody say restored. restored. Everybody say repaired. And everybody say recycled. recycled. This had a wealthy play. In the world, there's $50 trillion of cash, coins, and currency. $50 trillion. But there's $230 trillion of debt and credit in the world. So the wealthy know, I'm going to keep my cash. I'm going to put the work to me when I want to, how I want to. And I'm going to leverage this credit, understanding that if I shoot my shot buying a franchise, if I shoot my shot buying that building, if I shoot my shot getting a strip mall, if I shoot my shot getting an apartment complex, if I shoot my shot getting a two-family, and the shit don't work out, I always can rebuild, restore, repair, and recycle my credit. Fuck I'm worried about. Excuse my language with these children out here, but I got to talk right now. So also what the wealthy know is this, the next layer of credit. They understand that not only can their credit be rebuilt, I need everybody to say that again, rebuilt, rebuilt. Restored. restored, repaired, repaired. and recycled. recycled. That means used again. It might take you 18 months to use it again, it might take you two years to use it again, but I'm back. But what they also know, I'm telling you on a game with a wealthy, y'all, that nobody ever told us. Nobody came back and gave us this game. Our schools K through 12 ain't give us this game. They taught us photosynthesis and shit. Is <laughs> that not only can you use your personal credit, everybody say personal credit, but then you can use your family credit, say family credit. Then you can use your business credit, say business credit. Then you can use credit partners, say credit partners. So what the wealthy also know, what the wealthy also know is that, hey, I can use my credit and shoot my shot. If I airball, miss, brick, or hey, it just don't work out. I throw my joint back in the repair, rebuild, restore, recycle. But guess what? My wife up next. And then if my wife, we try to get a building together and that don't work out, we not going to be all in our feelings and all that gossip on the phone. And I knew credit was bad. And see, real estate no good. You know people be talking about real estate a scam? How the hell real estate scam? Go ask your landlord. <laughs> That's our people. You try one real estate deal, you ain't even educate yourself, first of all. You got into real estate uneducated, shit didn't work out, and now you're mad at real estate. Like you being a mad at real estate is gonna hurt real estate feelings. And now you're the customer again. So what they understand is that I can shoot my shot, not just with me, but then I line my whole family up. So like last Thanksgiving, I literally sat my whole family down. Grandpa, moms, aunts, uncles, sisters, literally. In real life though, King, CEO shit. Grandpa, I had to go to my grandpa first though. Grandpa, I want to sit everybody down, can I? You got to ask grandpa. You can't just go to grandpa house and just sit everybody down. He said, sure, son. So I did an audit of our family. It's like, I'm giving you a game to do. I'm not just telling you what I did. Do this. If you're really the CEO of your last name, sit everybody ass down and do an audit. What's your score? Have you looked at your credit? I want to know about to. Do you have your credit profile? If not, you get at creditcheckttotal.com or experian.com. Do an audit of everybody's credit and see where everybody stands with life insurance. Including the elders. Hey, listen, you about to die. You closer to everybody else. It's a fact. I don't want you to die. Let's stop being spooky black and brown people. We can't talk about death. 
One of my Jewish and Asian friends, they put me on the game, what they did, they look at the elder in their family, the oldest person. They, got a, they looked at a quote for the oldest person in their family to get life insurance, a multi-million dollar policy. She was astronomical, like three, four grand a month. But everybody chipped in together to pay for grandma life insurance. So when grandma go, everybody cashed out and broke the bread. Real game. Everybody like, oh. Game, everybody say game, game. game, game. This was Freeski on the corner. But you gotta be willing to talk about death. If you're scared to talk about death, you can't talk about legacy in life. Oh, I don't wanna talk about that death, man. I don't know, man, don't, don't jinx me. Knock on wood. Motherfucker, you're gonna die. <laughs> Period. Prepare for it. So you sit down with your family and do the credit audit as well. I'm gonna show you why. Because we're gonna teach you the strategy in our school. I'm gonna show you how to get an average. My av our average student, this is in real life. Our average student gets $50,000 of business funding on their first round of funding. No bank statements needed. No employment needed. No tax returns needed. No W-2s needed. All you need is credit and a heartbeat. Do we have any of our easy funding JMA students here? Anybody got funded? Y'all, you did? He like, I kind of want to say it, but I kind of don't. You didn't get funded yet, but he in. We missing out on capital, all y'all. We getting students average of $50,000 of funding off their business with no employment needed, no tax returns needed, all what I just said. So whether it's your family or whether it's you, check out this game. If one person or a family starts five LLCs, cost a couple hundred bucks, five LLCs, limited liability companies. That's how we get our funding. You get business funding leveraging your personal credit. It does not go on your credit report, so stop tripping. But you leverage your personal credit that will show you how to rebuild, restore, and repair, and recycle. You leverage that to get business funding from five different businesses. If you go to 25 banks and get an average of $50,000 from 25 banks on five businesses, that's $6.25 million access to capital you have for your last name. In real life. You heard me. If you follow our strategies and tap into what your brother's trying to tell you, you can rebuild your credit from wherever it's at. So I want to talk about that real quick for those who got the messed up credit right now. Don't trip about it. Get focused on it. So what that means as the CEO of your family, what I would do, this is me, the trapper in me. If I'm broke, see, I approach everything if I'm dead broke because I've been broke mad times in my life. So when I speak to broke people, it's not insulting y'all. I'm saying I've been where a dollar sweet tea and apple pie from McDonald's was like my, my come up. I've been broke, broke, like grown man, no car, broke, broke. In foreclosure, broke, broke, depressed, crying on my knees. In real life, I'll be, I'll be vulnerable with y'all. So when I say I'm trying to tell you how to build yourself up from the mud without trapping them. So the first thing I want to do if I'm broke, broke, and my credit's messed up, is that I'm going to focus everything I do on building and restoring and repairing my credit. So that means ain't no birthdays until the credit get fixed. That means ain't no Christmases until the credit get fixed. That means ain't no Valentine's Day, boo, until the credit get fixed. Ain't no sparkles. Ain't no loud bill. Well, you might reduce the loud bill, but until the credit get fixed. You got you to gotta, you gotta think sometimes. But my point is, if you don't have capital for your last name, and you focus on restoring your credit, whatever you got to do. We'll teach you how to read a credit report, understand the utilization ratios, all that shit, all that. We'll give you the whole game, and we got credit repair services for you if you want to just use us as an expert. My brother, one of the best in the country to do it with integrity. You ain't got to go through that random Instagram credit repair guy because it's $300. Go to the expert that's proven. I was focused investing all my family money on getting that done first for the person in my family that's closest to getting funded. 
Because then off of that, you're closest to the $50,000 on average of capital. Now you might get $25,000, you might get twenty two, you might get thirty five. dollars It's more than what they got them had. But now if you're informed and educated, remember step one was informed and educated, then you know how to turn that money over into real estate and business opportunities. That's why I say you gotta learn first. We say we got a money problem, but if I give you 50 grand right now, you'll fumble it. You won't even know how to evaluate the four units. They go buy the four units. So what do you need the money for? You don't need the damn money. You're missing the strategy first. Information first. Then you need the money. So step one was information. Step two, money. How do we get the money, Jay? Credit. Put yourself on. You ain't got to ask nobody for nothing. No loans, they broke, put me on. Put your goddamn self on. So you leverage your personal, family, and business credit to put yourself on. But then, as you get nice with it and credible, you can bring on credit partners, people you don't even know. So me and King meet one day. We're kicking it. Boom, boom, boom. Now, I got my credit exhausted, my capital tied up. But I got a dope opportunity. I bring a 26% return on a four unit with some equity. King like, listen, my money tied up too, but I got a 780 score. I'm like, you want to get down? This is what the wealthy do. I'm telling you what they do. They don't start tripping about the money. and all. We, we, we start tripping. They solve the damn problems. When I left Lincoln work release in Harlem, New York, when I was on work release in 1999, I'm coming down the steps with my white bag with my greens on. My prison number was 99R1288. This is my real life. An OG gave me a little card that said, there's no such thing as problems, only lack of solutions. Everybody write that down. This, this is my gym to you. There's no such thing as problems. It's only a lack of solutions. So once you find this, the plug, the solution, the fix, problem gone. So I, I, I think through life from that perspective. So now we talked about how to get the bag through personal, family, and business credit. That was lesson two. I'm going to give you all a four-step easy blueprint. How to get it in real life. Inform yourself, strategy, educate yourself, because you're going to need that. Because I'll give you the bag. We always focus on the money to get the money and screw it up. Then screw up our credit and try to rebuild and restore and repair it. It still ain't learned nothing. So boom, now we go to step three. Understanding businesses. I want to be your teacher. I want to be your mentor. I want y'all to be fruit off my tree. I told you I got us. All you got to do is be intentional and tap in. Live stream, tap in, share this message. Step three, understanding business. It works like this. Here's my simple business philosophy, what I learned in 15 years managing multiple multi-million dollar businesses. I don't mean Jay does everything. I mean a staff of over 37 people, organizational charts, company handbooks, applications, onboarding process, all that fancy fly shit. I do that in real life. Real companies, real offices, Real compliance, real administration, real treasury, real bookkeeping, real reporting, real financial controls, all that. So what I learned in business is that you're not going to start there in most cases. As an entrepreneur, in most cases, you're going to start off working in your business. Everybody say, in your business. In your business. But your goal as an entrepreneur, and I'm teaching you this in our curriculum, I'm going to teach you how to be the best entrepreneur you can be from a business class, not from some instructor with some degrees where he never owned shit in his life. From a business coach and instructor that's really built businesses from the ground up. After you're working in your business, you're gonna find out how your business functions, right? Then you're gonna work your way out of your business. Everyone say out of your business. Out of your business. The goal to do that is so you can be the CEO Focus on the future success of your company, scaling your company, growing your company, bringing new capital in your company, new partners for your company. That's how you scale and grow a business. You got to get out of it. So you work in your business, work your way out of your business, to then work on your business. Everybody say, on your business. So you work in your business, work your way out of your business, then work on your business. How you get there is my four Ps. The four Ps of business are this. For any strong organization to scale, to grow, to be automated, you need personnel. Everybody said personnel. 
Everybody say personnel. personnel. That's people. You're going to need people to replace you in the business. It's just like trapping. You start trapping you hand to hand. Now, you don't want to be on a block all that damn day. So you find a little worker. You say, look, you take over my block. I'm going to get to work. You run the block. Here's what I do. I bag up this way. I break it all down to point two twenties, put a sandwich bag, cut the top, put them in hundred packs, put hundred packs in G packs, and then I stash it over here. That's what you do now. That's what I do now. You do that. Now, you only keep six in your hand. So if the boys come, you can swallow them. That's how I was taught. I ain't never been caught hand to hand. After you swallow them, you poop them out the next day, rinse them off, go back to the block. In real life. Listen, man, listen. I'm a super trapper. So now, fast forward 15 years, in corporate America and business, in real estate, I close real estate deals all over the country that I don't even got to see. Because outside of people, my other P is, everybody say processes. processes. That's my other P. I create processes. Here's how I evaluate a four-unit building. Here's what I look at. The purchase price, repair costs, liens, clear title, carrying costs, closing costs, all-in costs, renovation costs, ROI, cap rate. Here's how I evaluate the deal, my process. Then the other P is procedures. Everybody say procedures. You map these out in your business. I'm going to show you how to do this in the career. I'm going to show you how to do all this. You create procedures for those personnel to then replace you so you can spend your time doing better shit. And then you have the last P, which is called protocol. Everybody say protocol. protocol. You set up consequences and rewards for what happens in your business. That's your protocol. So my staff knows everybody can't just call me in my, in my company. There's a hierarchy. You just can't go to the big homie just off the rip. You got to go to the block leader first, the manager first. So you create these systems in your business. You can scale your business. So now while I'm doing this, growing the business, growing the message, spreading the word about our, our school, our company, my staff has process and procedures, my personnel to run the company operations while I as a CEO can then grow the company and build the relationships. That's how you create a scalable business. That's lesson three. Lesson four. Real estate. There's really four, th four key things I want you to understand about real estate. Let me break it down this way. One, I want us to understand home ownership is not investing Vlad TV and Grant Cardone and other people from other communities or whoever the hell they are feel like home ownership is a bad investment. Coming from where I come from, where my mom made 100000 out the hood for just living there, owning your home is one of the best purchases you can make as you're looking to build family assets and legacy. I'm going to tell you, matter of fact, let me tell you why right now. So home ownership is our first real estate lesson. I have an amazing book here, Lord of My Land, Five Steps to Home Ownership. It's a bestseller in real estate and mortgages. I want you guys, if you can, to get that book. Home ownership makes sense because of this. Just by living somewhere, and mind you, if you're going to be a primary residence, if you're going to live there, you can own one to four units. Even one to four units with a store attached. As a primary residence, all you got to do is live in one of the units, you can rent the other ones out, and live for free or live for cheap. So now you're living somewhere, you can own the store and the units all for 3% down in current banking standards. As my wife said, that's 6000 down for a $200,000 house. Let's take it to New York prices. That's 12000 down for a $400,000 house. 15,000 down for a $500,000 house. Where's Mutali? He's still here? Come here real quick, King. We're going to be quick. 
This brother used this strategy right here in Brooklyn. How much you put down on your property? Talk to him, Kim. $12,000. To buy what? A uh, four unit um, building around the corner. A four unit building around the corner. How many rental units? Three rental. How many stores? One store. It's not commercial, it's residential mixed use. Anything five units or more without residential is considered commercial. When you have more residential that outweigh your commercial, one to four units is called residential mixed use. So he was able to leverage what I'm teaching you all today. He hopped in it, jumped in, because he wanted to own real estate coming out of UK, right? Wasn't as informed about it, but took action. And now we're working together because as King Malik said, he got another loan order to fix it up. He's behind on that mortgage. The property still has some value. And we're going to figure out to the best we can how to save that property and keep it in the community. But he took action and leveraged that strategy. Action beats ambition to take it down. Now what I want you all to do is learn from his mistakes and educate yourself and inform yourself more so you're not in a situation, because he got a situation where he got a hard money loan, and now he's trying to get out of a bad loan. But that's where the education and information comes in, so we're more informed and can make more strategic decisions. But this works, 3% down, he put 12,000 down for three rentals and a store here in Brooklyn. 12 grand down. So the other reason why we own real estate while we own real estate, it's for the appreciation. Everybody say appreciation. appreciation. That means properties go up in value over time. Mutale, come back. I'll give you some exercise. How much did you buy the building for? Um, 425,000. 425,000. How much is the building worth today? 3.2. 3.2 million. When did you buy it? September 2001. September 2001. Now, we're going to, again, break down more of, your, of your, your story, put some improvements into it, got some renovation money. I'm going to show you all that game, though. Clap for this king again one more time. Thank you. Appreciate you. Somebody in 2001 will say, man, I, ain't, I don't want to buy that. I ain't putting 12000 up. I'm going to the club. I'm buying some sparkles. I'm buying some sparkles, goddammit. it. That should look good. Six racks for a section. You could have went half on a goddamn three, four unit with a store in Brooklyn. Three unit with a store. But see, we have the opportunities today to buy. We'll say, well, it ain't worth that much now. He could predict the future 15 years ago, 18 years ago. But if you could buy something now, today, 18 years from now, that'll be worth two and a half million more than what you paid, would you do it today? But now would you do it not knowing the future? Just knowing the opportunity that might, what might happen. See, the other benefit outside of appreciation that's going up in value is you pay down your mortgage and now you create equity in your property. With that equity in your property, See, equity is the difference between what you owe on a property and what it's worth. So if you owe $2 million and a property is worth $3.2 million, how much equity do you have? $1.2 million. And when you learn my strategies, I'm going to show you the right way to tap into this equity through refinances or home equity lines and know the difference between the both of them and when to use either one to be able to tap into that equity and pull out cash tax-free. Take the equity out of your house you've just been living in, use that to go buy more assets, not sparkles. So, appreciation's one benefit to owning real estate. Outside of that, the tax advantages. You can write off the maintenance on the property, on your rental units, the interest on your mortgage, the closing cost, capital depreciation on the asset. Call segregation on everything you could take out of the asset. If it's a full-time investment property, you could write off everything in the asset you could take out with a screwdriver or a hammer. You could write that off your earned income. 
So now if your earned income is $100,000 a year, and you can write it down to $50,000 a year, you're now paying Uncle Sam fifteen grand less on a 30% tax basis. Fifteen grand you now kept into your last name to buy more assets or life insurance or repair somebody's credit in your credit ecosystem. This is the game game. So appreciation, tax advantages, the cash flow from the rentals. Also by owning real estate, you have the power and control. You earn the air rights, the mineral rights, the right to build up one of the properties. The mineral rights, diamonds, gold, gas, farming, tomatoes, oil, whatever, parking. I ain't gonna say that. Y'all the loud crew over there, I, I, I see y'all. So this is why I buy real estate. Now let's talk about how you do it. You can get it for 3% down in today's banking standards. In some cities, you can even get subsidies for the 3% down where they'll cover your whole down payment. You can get a gift letter from family to cover your down payment. You can get somebody's death benefit or their equity to get a down payment. Then outside of the 3% down, you can use multiple co-borrowers to buy the house. Meaning more than one of you guys can put your credit and income together to go take down the building. It might require five of y'all to be in a three bedroom. You don't want to live like that right now. You want to be so comfortable. You want the big flat screen in the projects. as opposed to being a little uncomfortable temporarily to own an asset for your last year. Your see for your family what they can't see for themselves. Outside of that, you can use the future rental income to qualify. You can live in one unit, and the banks will give you a credit for the future rents of these units to help you qualify on your current income. Somebody's like, how do you do that? You go to your mortgage companies, your banks, you get pre-qualified. I got it in my book, Lord of My Land. We teach it in our RBC course. I will teach you the proper steps to buying your first home and then going into investment properties. I'll give you the whole game. I will not hold back. Have not held back. So we got that, the future rental income. Then you can use your Section 8 in government vouchers to buy real estate. Section 8's not a rental program. It's a housing program. You can use a section eight in government vouchers to go qualify for a mortgage for a three-family house in real life. Or coach your auntie on how she can do it, and you go on a deed after and own a property in real life. While you being a value add to the family because you got the game, because you locked in. See, that's my whole up. I know more than everybody else. I know more, and when you go to my school, you're going to learn more than 90% of Americans know about real estate, business, and credit. So when you know more, you can bust more moves than everybody else. They got to follow your lead. That's the value. My secret sauce, y'all want to know the real secret sauce? Do y'all want to know the real secret sauce? Yes. Do you really want to know the sauce? Yes. The secret sauce is to make yourself so valuable because you know so much about real estate, business, and credit, that everybody in your sphere of influence, whether that's locally, nationally, regionally, internationally, your sphere of influence, your fraternity, your church, your block, your hood, your family, your sphere of influence, to know so much that you're so valuable that all you have is the pick of the litter of opportunities to break bread. See, my sphere of influence has grown international and national. Why do you think Malik Yoba called me? Bro, I got a $5 million deal in Brooklyn. I need to talk to you. King Sean King, hit me up, bro. I'm trying to do a crowdfund. I need to talk to you. You learn so much to become so valuable, you now can break bread on all kinds of opportunities. Quick, quick example, and then I'm going to my next lesson. Me and Malik working on a building right now in Brooklyn that we all can participate in. For those who got capital, credit, or some kind of assets, who will be willing to partner with me? Raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Everybody look around. Look around. Be the value add. This is my secret sauce. How can my family go broke when I'm so valuable? I always got partners. We can't go broke, King. I'm so valuable because what I know. That's the, that's the sauce. Know so much they can't turn you down. Boom, we covered home ownership. I got to breeze through investing because we do got a JFK flight to catch.
And I want to be able to engage you all a little bit after we leave. Real estate. Investing. I'm going to break this all down again. There's so many strategies. We all know the buying and flipping. Buy low, sell high. Buying and renting. Buy a property, rent it out, get tenants. I'm going to break down to you how you even find a property, evaluate the property. How you even find a realtor. What 21 questions do you even ask your realtor to make sure they're the right realtor for you? It's not that deep. Oh, you're a real estate agent. That's great. Well, how long have you worked as a real estate agent? Why did you choose that brokerage? Are you a residential agent, commercial agent, industrial agent? How many deals have you done in the last 90 days? What's the highest deal you've done? I need three clients who worked with recently, their references. I will give you all the whole game on how to do this. So now on real estate investing, we got buying low, selling high, flipping. We got renting. This is a strategy that my protege y'all seen earlier, Isaac, did over 300,000 last year, 25 years old. GD kid, 25 years old, made 300 racks. Built a $900,000 business. Built, he owns properties. He's developing a property. I'm coaching through his first development. He's flipping houses. He's renting houses. And he's wholesaling real estate. Wholesaling real estate is how you can get started and get some cash. Without it, you don't own the property though. You won't own the asset, but you can create some cash flow. You simply position yourself as a middleman or middle woman in a transaction. We're going to teach you how to find the deals, all kind of ways to find off-market properties, all kind of ways. We're going to show you how to evaluate those deals. Then you contract the deals, put a contract on it, find investors that got more money than you and essentially assign or sell your contract for a fee. You're the middleman in between and could get on average five to 10 grand or more in between just by giving someone else your contract because you had the wherewithal, astuteness, and knowledge to evaluate the deal, contract it, negotiate it, and now give it off to somebody else for some cash. Show you all that. Then I got another no money down strategy we're gonna show you on how to syndicate real estate, and buy apartment buildings, and use in your LLC with you as the manager, use other people's cash, credit, experience, expertise. And now you could be the manager of a company, have limited experience, limited cash, no cash, no credit, but could take down whole apartment buildings through your company through creative financing, all by leveraging creative partnerships to what's called a real estate syndication. I know all the game, game, game. Your brother came up, not just financially came up, I intellectually came up. I soaked what they had out there and put that hood hustle to it and that energy to it. So we're gonna show you that, syndication. Now lastly, before we begin to wrap, I gotta give you this lesson. Everybody say OCM. OCM. OCM is the opportunity cost of money. See, what happens is, here's where the value comes in again, by knowing so much. Everybody should know this. Wealthy people live by this. It's where can I park my money where it makes me more money where it's currently at. As you start to get more abundance, you want to keep the abundance turning over. You don't want money just sitting on the side. You got to put it to work. So whether you got 10000 a 100000 or a million, if you got it sitting in cash thinking you're doing something, that money is getting you 0% interest on your money. Matter of fact, it's losing 3% every year because the cost of living goes up on average 3% every year. Inflation rate, your money loses value. If you got your money in a checking account, you're getting 0.001% interest. That's 10 cents on $10,000 in a year. That's a dollar in your checking account on 100,000 in a year. That's 10 to ask your bank. I'm not lying to you. $10 on a million in a year sitting in a checking account. You wising up. You go get the money market savings account on their ass. You got 2%. You getting 200 on 10,000. 2,000 on 100,000 or 20,000 on a million. That pension account, that 401k, that 403b. And that pension account You get a whopping 5%. You like, I'm up. You get $500 on 10,000. 
You're getting 5000 on 100000 in a whole year. Good for you. 50000 on a million. So there's two lessons to this. It's an us lesson and a them lesson. The us lesson is ask yourself, where's my money parked at, and how can I turn it over to make more money for me? So I know through real estate and business, you can leverage this into real estate assets, get tax advantages, appreciation, cash flow. And if you do real estate the right way, you won't even buy the asset. If you use my strategy, you won't even buy it until you know what ROI you're making on the other side. And you just make sure that the money you're putting in earns you more than where it's currently at. You trusting them to make the money, the market can crash, they don't owe you shit. It's not even guaranteed. But you're not even informing and educating yourself to trust yourself to invest your own damn money to make more than 5000 or 100000 in a year. That's all you got to do. You got 70 grand in the IRA right now, 401k. Can you make that money work more for you than where they got it working? Second lesson is all wealthy people, wealthy families got the same problem. So private lenders, wealthy folks, those with abundance are always looking for opportunities to park their capital on other projects, including me. Because we don't want our money sitting in these punk ass accounts. So we're always looking for opportunities. All these wealthy families all over Brooklyn and New York are all looking for opportunities. If you're informed on how to find the opportunities in your own goddamn hood, and how to position yourself as knowledgeable on the opportunities, wealthy folks will not just buy a contract from you and get you out of there. If you position yourself properly, they'll partner with you in a syndication and be a capital partner while you stay in the deal, own the asset of their capital, and give them a better return than where the money's currently at. I'm showing you how to buy the hood back. You gotta be knowledgeable to position yourself. They get us out the picture because we ain't knowledgeable enough. So they box us out. They know you're a newbie. They take, Malcolm X said we are economically exploited. They, they economically exploit us because we're not economically educated. We're not economically mature, economically sophisticated. I'm giving you the game today. Last lesson as we wrap. I'm going to keep saying that until I feel like I'm done. <laughs> ROI. By well, show of hands right now, who come up here and teach us how to find an ROI in 10 seconds? Raise your hand. Ken, Ken. Everybody, keep your hand up if you know how to find an ROI in 10 seconds to teach us. Everybody look around. We got about five people out of 500 that can find a return on investment in our neighborhood. This is why they whooping our ass out here and your hood being gentrified. Young Jay Morrison, get up here. You put on a shirt, you better do this right. You got 10 seconds. You, you, you did a big, bold thing. Come on. Not even so many people. You say you young Jay Morrison. Young Jay Morrison, step up. He got the young Jay Morrison hashtag on Instagram and all that. Here you go. You got 10 seconds, I'm booting you off. You, you, it's a formula. It is a formula. I'm so nervous. All right, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. You nervous? I appreciate you. Love. Get it up for him. Get it up for him. Stay up here with me. Stay up. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. This is old Jay and young Jay. Family, this is how we find the ROI on any investment. I don't care if it's a bottle or water. If you got a water hustle, you still got to find an ROI. Because those numbers I just showed you are all ROI numbers. So if you can't find an ROI on your opportunity, you can't go to somebody with money and be like, yo, I got a better ROI for you. You got to know this in order to be able to get the big bag. The formula to finding an ROI, you don't got to be a mathematician. All you got to do is do my formula. The formula to finding a return on any investment is you take net profits. Everybody say net profits. Divided by total investment. Say divided by total investment. Times 100 equals ROI. One more time, net profit, net profit. Divided, by divided by total investment times 100, times 100. equals ROI. ROI. I'm going to show you how it looks in real life. We find a building. You good, young Jay Morrison. Back to your seat. Thank you, sir.
Clap for him, clap for him. Told you it's a bold statement. You can't put no young Jay on your shirt, boy. Wayne. Woo! Young Jay about that action. Gotcha. You find a property in Brooklyn that's 375000 I'm going to show you how to find a property. I'm going to show you how to evaluate the property. I'm going to show you how to interview the contractors that's going to go out for free and give you an estimate on how much work the property needs. They come back and say, yo, you're going to need 80 grand to fix this property. I'm going to show you how to go to your attorneys, your title agents, and everyone else to find out the title is free and clear, ain't no liens or taxes on the property. So we find out the property also got a $15,000 tax lien. Cool. So do we know to buy this property, our, our, our all-in cost is going to be $470,000, I want to say. Am I right? $470,000, right? So our purchase price is 375, renovations are 80, and fees or liens are 15. So we know our total investment would be 470,000 to buy this property. But then we're gonna talk with our real estate professionals to find out well, how much the shit worth after we fix it up. Which are your comps, your after repair value called your ARV. That's what you're gonna sell it for. So we know we can sell it for 550. Once it's fixed up. So that means 550 we sell it for minus what we pay 470. That means we got $80,000 of potential profit. Right? Right? Sell it for 550, we pay 470, our profit margins 80,000. So now we do the formula. This is how you get the big bag. So now you go, okay, I ain't good at math, but just do what Jay said on my calculator, on my phone. Net profit is how much? How much? 80,000. So now put 80,000 in your phone. Somebody do it. 80,000 in your phone. Divided by our total investment. 470,000. Whatever that number says, we're going to multiply it times 100. And that's going to equal our return on investment on that opportunity. What we got? 17? 17% ROI. Something they ain't teach you all through grade school, all through high school. Most of y'all even in college, I just taught you in the corner in about two minutes. That's how they duping us. They could teach this shit. They don't want to teach you this. Because if we learn this, we now compete with the wealthy class. So now with that 17%, you know what your money could potentially do. Or you know to go to a partner who has more capital than you to say, hey, I got an opportunity for 17%. Or you know what, I need 7%, I'll give you 10%. And you start to create money out of thin air. How you put your family on. So I just gave you all four steps. Educated, information, informed, strategy. Then, understanding the credit ecosystem. Repair, rebuild, restore, recycle. Family, personal, business, partners. Then I taught you the business strategy, work your way out, put the system in place, processes. Then I just taught you the whole summary of the real estate game. In one corner class. Peace family, hope you enjoyed that game from our infamous corner class series. Now I wanna give you more game, a certification program, mentorship calls, a one-on-one -on -one game plan, all that support you need to help you beat your corner trap, your college trap, or your corporate trap. Let me give you the game through the Jay Morrison Academy of how I got off the corner of South Tiffin Springfield in Newark, New Jersey and made it to the corner office of the Black House that we own free and clear. Guys, tap in to our online mentorship program with the weekly calls and your student support calls. All you gotta do is click the link right now for a super deep discount, actually $27 a month for access to over 80 courses with the mentorship calls, your tests, quizzes, and archives, all that. I'm giving the game away for the low, for the corner. Peace.